dreamers dream, your dreams come true. There's no limit to what we can do. Turning no's to yes, leaving doubt behind, releasing the stress. We were born to shine. You're now tuned in to the Sade Champagne Show. show. With the cast, 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 Christina Christina Renee, 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 Rick and Melissa Wood, Wood, Lisa Lee Walt, Veronica Escobar Winners, Winners, Ariana Cardé, and all y'all cool Falama, celebrity guest interviews, segments on health. Wellness, creativity, entrepreneurship, spirituality, hot topics, and more. You're now tuned in to the Sade Champagne Show. Good evening, everyone. That was Sam Hunt with Single for the Summer. It's Sade Champagne, and welcome to our first ever Race and Identity in America special episode of the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. This has been on my heart for quite a while, and now is the time. It's beyond time. We are in Season 2 and on Episode 21. Can you believe it? Every episode is available on iTunes. Search the Sade Champagne Show, and you can download them for free. Also, my Sade Champagne YouTube channel is another place where you can listen to the show afterwards. Thanks to everyone for tuning in from all around the globe. All the episodes of my show are available at blogtalkradio.com slash grindhard underscore radio. I've also posted the direct link to this episode on my Twitter and Facebook pages, so you can tune in at any time. Thank you to Travis Miller for creating and producing my show's theme song and to Scott Swish for mixing it. If this is your first time listening, I'm a professional musical artist, performer, inspirational speaker, and entrepreneur. I've created, directed, and executive produced over 200 charitable and inspirational events, including my popular Power of a Dream tour. I love mentoring, coaching, authentically being myself, and using my platform to encourage, empower, and bring out the gold in others. Tonight's two-hour special episode is all about race and identity in America. We will be discussing everything surrounding these topics on an all-star panel. I'm not afraid to push the envelope, challenge traditional thinking, and discuss uncomfortable topics in order to empower, encourage, and unite others. We will also be taking your calls, questions, and sharing your thoughts live throughout the show. My Power of a Dream Tour is always booking new shows and performances. We actually were just at the Ventura County Fair today. So it's been a crazy, hectic, awesome day. This summer, we will be in Fresno, Ventura, Oxnard, L.A. County, Orange County, and more. We love traveling, and if you're looking to bring Power of a Dream Tour or any of our award-winning, critically acclaimed artists or speakers to your city or event, please email me at sadechampagnemusic at gmail.com. Once again, that's sadechampagnemusic at gmail.com. You can also check out my Facebook page, Sade Champagne, to see our full schedule. Look under Events. Lastly, thank you to everyone who has been watching, sharing, and subscribing to all my new videos. I'm constantly writing new pieces and creating new songs, and I'm going into the recording studio very soon. To find out more info about my musical journey and how you can be involved, check out GoFundMe.com slash Sade Champagne Music. Once again, that's GoFundMe.com slash Sade Champagne Music. I'm going to be live tweeting and posting on Facebook all show long, and I want to know your thoughts. Tweet me at S-A-D-E-C-H-A-M-P-A-G-N-E, that's Sade Champagne, or Facebook me at Sade Champagne, Instagram, I am Sade Champagne, hashtag Sade Champagne Show or GHR to join in the conversation. Shout out to everyone who you already tweet me, you Facebook me, you Instagram, you YouTube, you email, you contact us any kind of way you can. Your support empowers me and my team. All right, so we are going to officially introduce our panel for tonight. They're in the studio. We are waiting on Felicia Echerbel. She should be in in just a few, but we're going to get this conversation going so we can get to our first topic. Next, right now we have Cody Nixon, a.k.a. Dick Chronicles. He is the creator, host, and original cast member of Grindhard Radio, which debuted on March 8, 2011. He's also the producer of the Internet radio shows, Radio Divas, Grown Folks Business, and he's also an executive producer for my radio show, The Sade Champagne Show. 
and he has an online store called Dips Closet. He is from Duval, Duval County, Florida, and of African American descent. Hey, Jet, how you doing? I am blessed tonight, Sade. I'm glad to be on your show with the lovely planner. Thank you for having me. So glad to have you. And as you guys know, I don't normally say what other people's ethnicities are, but for tonight's episode, we are going to. So don't be all surprised Absolutely. and shocked when you're in that, okay? <laughs> all right, and also... Nathan Martell is the owner of Efficacy Clothing, www.efficacyclothing.co, and the marketing manager for Bed I Sue, www.bedsue.com shoes. He is of Caucasian and Puerto Rican descent, born and raised in California. How are you doing tonight, Nate? Good. I'm still a little offended that you wouldn't just call me a cracker, though. I really was hoping you would do that. But just get it going already. Look, come on. Okay, I'll let I'm it slide. I'm not going though. to call you that. Yeah, you'll let it oh, slide. You know, we'll get, we're going to get into that. <laughs> you know what? I'm just right, throwing it out there. Everybody else can call me that. It's totally fine. <laughs> you don't call well, him that on my show, okay? I okay. know that's right. <laughs> All right. All right. And next we have the wonderful Miss Mika. She's a radio show host and I'm also one of the main hosts for Radio Divas right here on Grind Heart Radio. She's an artist manager, businesswoman. And she has started multiple companies, including Step Out Promotions, and she partners with the Core DJ Coalition. She is a military brat growing up all around the world and is of African-American descent. How are you doing tonight, Miss Mika? I'm good. How are you guys? Doing Lit. great. You're on the road right now, aren't you? I'll be in and out of you. I am traveling to Georgia, so I'll be in and out, in and out, in and out, but I'll be here. Awesome. It's okay. Well, everybody's going to have a chance to talk and people have a chance to listen, so that's perfect. Mm-hmm. And we will be having Felicia in in just a bit. When she gets in, then I will, you know, announce who she is and introduce you guys to her. And um, for those of you who don't know already, I'm originally from Orlando, Florida, but I've now spent half of my life in Ventura County, Florida, and as far as I know of, I'm of African-American descent. So <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. All right, Absolutely. so we will be taking, we'll be taking calls from our listeners so you can win with your questions. We will also be sharing your thoughts from Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Hashtag Sade Champagne Show to ask us questions and join in the conversation. So the only request I have for you guys tonight and for our listeners are, number one, to keep it real, meaning don't hold back. Okay, number two, be yourself. Number three, remember that my show is rated PG-13, so no f bombs, <laughs> no b words, no n right. words, and no language that's gonna like be hurtful to someone else. Okay? Because I'm sure we can all Absolutely. say what we want to say without understood. Those types of and then lastly, this is a no judgment zone, meaning that we can disagree and even be upset, but we will not attack or gang up on one another. <laughs> Unlike majority Absolutely. of the people in the world, we are actually going to communicate tonight. All right. All right. I love Sounds it. good. All right. Because I will only use my platform to inspire, empower, and encourage, even in tough, That's uncomfortable, right. or difficult times. Fair enough? Absolutely, fair. All right. So we're going to get Sade, darling, you coming in and out? Yeah. We're still here. The technical difficulties on Blog Talk Radio Park. It's all good. I guess we're just going to do this without Shot Egg. We're going to do it without her. <laughs> I, guess, I just guess we're going to do it without her. Nine Heart Radio. Shot Egg, your microphone going in and out, darling. Oh, my gosh, I noticed that. I was like, what happened? Yeah. Actually, the call failed, but it's okay. I'm in the show now. We're ready to go. So, Jit, we'll have you start that again. Share with us about your upbringing. A little bit about my upbringing. Um, well, you know, I was born and raised right here in Duval County, Florida. A lot of folks know it as Jacksonville, Florida. Um, I am one of, of five children. My mother practically raised us. On her own, you know what I'm saying. Um, you know, here and there, I we I had a father figure in my life, whether it was a stepfather or uncle. Um, you know, um, 
this little average guy from Jacksonville, Florida. I think we had it pretty easy. Our mom uh, definitely did what she had to do to take care of her children. So I have to uh, give her the utmost respect because it's not easy raising five kids uh, by yourself. And what about, like, share more, go into that with your upbringing, you know, growing up African-American male in Duval County, and what was that like? Like, really let us into your world, what it looks like. I got you. Um, now, as like I said, as far as a child, everything was good, but as I got older, um, I would definitely say, because I don't know if nobody noticed that, once upon a time, um, Jacksonville was the number one murder capital um, in the world. You understand what I'm saying? Hmm. And what, what what really got me is, you know, a um, lot of racial profiling, a um, lot of, you know, crimes going on in the area. You know, um, it's rough down here in Duval for some of our uh, young black brothers, you know, or just our young brothers in, in, in general, you know. But um, I think the city is at a place where we are coming out of that, um, what word do I want to use, that, that stigma. Of, of just being this uh, dangerous place, you know, because for the most part, people come to Florida to vacation, uh, to relax and things like that. So I would say as I got older, things got uh, a, a little bit tougher for me, but, you know, I always perse- persevered through anything. Um, but, mm-hmm. yeah, we definitely at one point in time, this city, we was tagged as the number one murder captain, and that's not a good thing. That's nothing to be proud of. Wow. And uh, what about you, Nate? Uh, so I got, uh, I got a, a, okay. I have a Caucasian mother at the PG word from the Midwest and Mm -hmm. I got a Puerto Rican dad from Brooklyn. So I got like an, I love Lucy thing going on right here between the combination of them too. (laughs) So I'm I'm like Mm -hmm. a little Ricky combination going on right now. Very different, Mm -hmm. uh, military family. So I was a military brat. So that's how we ended up in California. So I moved out to California from Chicago when I was about four years old, and I have been here pretty much my entire life since since we moved out here. So, uh, yep, uh, all through my high school and everything like that, I was always surrounded by the military because, like I said, I was a military brat. (laughs) Do you identify um, with you being biracial, which, you know, I didn't know until you told me that. Do most people just look at you and they see a white guy? And what do you identify as? Uh, let's see. Let's see. I have a Southern California boy who surfs and listens to heavy metal. White. (laughs) (laughs) Is that what you identify with more and what people look at you or you see yourself as both? I don't identify. I I mean, see, because I went to, I've been to Puerto Rico so many times hanging out with my family. I see my dad's side of the family. They speak only Spanish. Uh, so it's like, it, it depends on who I'm hanging out with. Uh, I, for me, both sides seem normal. That's all I can say, um, because I've been surrounded by both my entire life. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I and plus take into account Southern California, heavily Hispanic community in the first place. Mm-hmm. So you know, I, I don't know. Sure, I guess I guess most of the things I would do uh, would be considered uh, white activities, though. I guess you could say that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like how you say white activities. What would be considered white activities? Just Surfing and heavy metal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to oh, dig more. And ice hockey. And I play ahead. ice hockey. I said, and I play ice hockey. That's, there's, nothing, <laughs> there's nothing whiter. There's nothing whiter than ice hockey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Miss Miko, what was your experience like growing up? Um, born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, mm-hmm. Parents divorced, moved to Mississippi. Um, both of my parents mm-hmm. were in Mississippi. Um, Mississippi is a very, very rural area, so a uh, lot of racial profiling, no job, poverty. Um, but however, I'm military brat, moved around, ambitious, um, young black woman, single mother myself. So that's kind of my upbringing, you know. And so do you find that the upbringing you came from was common around you, or do you feel like it was unique? Mm, my situation was kind of unique. Uh, my dad was in the Army, so a lot of – I moved around a lot. I, I'm mm. still kind of antisocial. I don't, I don't let mm. people in, you know. So my, mm. my 
background is kind of totally different from the norm. I'm kind of totally mm-hmm. off the wall. Like, I like heavy metal, but I'm straight R&B, hip-hop, <laughs> uh, you know, mm-hmm. Christian. Mm-hmm. I can listen to it all. So I'm kind of, you know, multicultural, to say. Mm-hmm, 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 definitely. And so um, I think it's, you know, interesting that we would that we would say, you know, here we are in 2016, and you were hearing what Nate was sharing with his experiences in growing up, that people still consider certain things to be white people activities versus black people activities. Right. You read about this, Shelley. What do you guys think about that? Mm. Well, I personally don't, I don't, I don't think anything is um, attached to any t- type of nationality. It doesn't matter. I have, like tonight, I'm going to be going to a party. One of the DJs there is a white middle aged you know, Wama, Tampa Mystic, which was on our show, she listens mm-hmm. to hip-hop. But because she's mm-hmm. white doesn't mean that she can't listen to hip-hop. Because I'm black doesn't mm-hmm. mean that I can't like, you know, uh, Shania Twain, you know. Right. So mm-hmm. I don't right. attach anything to any type of culture. I like what I like, you know. Um, I think sometimes mm-hmm. we, you know, people think that you're a product of your environment. I'm not. I'm a product of TV. I see something mm-hmm. on TV, mm-hmm. I like it. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. Mhm. Mhm. For me, when I was growing up, you know, I feel like there are some things about my upbringing that were common. I don't want to say use the word common to the African American experience, but common to African Americans and people of color that grew up around, you know, in my area because I I didn't grew up in like a low income area where there were a lot of people of color that were there, and many of them experienced like a lot of drugs and things, you know, in their families and you know, and poverty and the surroundings. But the difference is, you know, ever since I was young, like, my mom is, you know, had me and my brother be phenomenal thinkers. You know, she used to be, she was in multi-level marketing. And so I knew from a young age about entrepreneurship and about educating myself. And so the funny thing is, even though I was in neighborhoods that seemed, you know, um, like we see a lot either on TV or either we all even know about where people, you know, seem to not have any education, you know, um, impoverished areas. I was always very educated, so I was reading at really high levels. I was, you know, intellectually, you know, at a much higher level. Even I remember in elementary school, and even the way that I spoke was a lot different, you know, a lot different than what was around me. And so that was challenging for me because I obviously identified with these people, you know, um, that they looked like me. I identified growing up in these communities, but I didn't think the way that, you know, the normal thinking or what people would think. And so I was called, you know, all different types of things, which we're going to actually go into now talking about this with dispelling different myths and stereotypes that we put on people. You know, I don't know if you guys are ever called this. Well, I don't know. Nate wouldn't be able to relate to this because he's not black, but, you know, being called like an Oreo, like being called an Oreo, being called like, a, you know, a black girl who wants to be white. And mm-hmm. I felt like that was something that was challenging to me because I'm like, okay, I don't understand why me wanting to be educated, me having dreams, me speaking differently than everyone around me would have to determine if I'm black enough or not. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Definitely. And so definitely. that was something that was really hard for me, you know, and took a lot of years for me to be able to, you know, be comfortable in my skin because, like I said, and I feel like a lot of those stereotypes still play true today. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Oh, yeah, it definitely happens to, to in today's society. And, you know, one thing about race and identity, I don't think um, uh, that's going to ever go away as long as we live after we leave this world, after our children grow up and they leave this world. Race and identity is always going to be an issue that I think at some point we're going to always have to, to have to discuss. Because I feel like at the end of the day with certain things and certain topics that's going on in the world today, it always ends up coming back to race or this mm-hmm. or that. Mm-hmm. You know, so I just think mm-hmm. it's something, and it's sad because, you know, it's 2016, not 1956. You understand what I'm saying? So um, it's amazing. It's amazing that it's still going on, but, yeah, it, it exists. And I think it exists more than we actually know about or think. Well, mm-hmm. you know, I got to – I got an interesting way to look at this. Okay. okay. So, you know, race in general, uh, if you look all throughout the history of race, it's basically broken down because certain 
you know, your races stayed together because they couldn't travel all around. So you stayed in the same area and then you procreated mm-hmm. within the same area. That's how it works. Mm-hmm. We now live in the age, we now live in the age of mass transportation. And we've only been doing this for the last like 50, 60 years. Okay. So we're now as a human race, only beginning to do mass uh, movement or across the entire world where we're starting to intermix what we would call race in the first place. So I might have a little bit of a, um, this might be a little crude, but there's a theory out there that eventually will basically procreate race out because of everybody mm-hmm. just intermixing all their races, which is possible. But the other side to that is that certain – you're not going to ever get rid of what I agree with you is you're not going to ever re- get rid of what we call culture. And certain people have certain cultures that bound together. And it's an always not – in my ways. opinion, yeah, not all, everything is not always race-related. Some things are culturally race – are culturally um, established I agree with that you to also extent. create the thing. So um, yeah. now, but we don't know because we're we're now just in the starting phases of starting to see like this. Like for an example, me, like you know the 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 mixing of races. Mm-hmm. This is only a this is a pretty even like the generation before mine, even my parents' generation, the generation before mm-hmm. that was not okay, was not okay with it. So. Only within one generation, two generations, we started to see this mixing concept, first of all, being accepted in society. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously, you know, there's still parts of the country where it's still not accepted. I right. mean, you're still parts of the world. They don't accept it. But, I mean, in my opinion, I think, uh, I think probably within the next 20, 30 years, I think it's going to be so common that it's not even going to be looked down upon much anymore. I mean, I you hope know, so. you're not going to, you're not going to convince that everybody, but I think for the most part, it's going to be gone. And then down the road, you're probably not going to run to the same lot of issues that we're running in 2016, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I can agree mm-hmm. with that. And I just want to just chime in on this last thing, too, because I know what Nathan said about things being so seg- segregated, uh, you know, the mm-hmm. blacks stay with the blacks and the whites stay with the whites and all, however, however that goes. That's kind of going back to my upbringing. You know, I lived in a neighborhood where most of the blacks stayed at. I went to mm-hmm. elementary, middle school, high school where mostly blacks went to, you know, so... Uh, you definitely have some valid points there, Nathan, and I definitely respect that. Yeah, and I'm I mean, gonna uh, play devil's advocate. Yeah, I'm gonna play devil's advocate. I'm gonna say that race is always gonna be an issue because I'm gonna, always gonna be of a certain color, and somebody else is always gonna be a, of a different color. And mm-hmm. um, I don't think people will change. I think some people will, but for the most part, they won't. You know, um, like my name is Constamica. My real government name is Constamica. When I go to the airport, mm-hmm. I'm always gonna. I have to go through the through the you know the metal detector thing, but um, I roll with somebody else named Barbara. She picked at random to walk through, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and even the guards say because my name is so uh, black black you know ethically, then I'm gonna always have to take my shoes off and you know be searched and patted down. It's not my fault that my name is Costamita. So even not even you know as me and you as friends, we may not may not see. Race, but society will always be race. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. And that's a good thing. But when I apply for a job, if I can, if I put Mika, I get a quicker call back. If I put Mm -hmm. Mika, I I don't. And I I have three degrees. You know, so race Mm -hmm. will always be seen. Most cultural races are owned by white individuals. Exactly. Because just like I said, my government name is Cody. I mean, not to be funny, I don't think you can get no whiter name than that, you know. And anybody who knows me, if it goes in my mouth, I might look like your favorite rapper. You never know. And I noticed that was an upswing for me when I got a job. They quickly called me back. But once I got there and for the interview, and in person, it's just like, oh, he's black, you know. So, Mika, you got a point too, darling. And that's just the truth at the end of the day. So sometimes it's like a blessing and a curse. So that's the thing, you know, and you guys are getting into what I want to talk about in this. With the workplace and even in people's views, why is that so? Why is it that someone will look at someone differently based upon their name, you know, or certain or certain views that we hold with people? You know, because obviously I'm not one of those people who's going to say I'm colorblind because that's a lie. I'm not colorblind. But the difference is, is I don't base people upon their race. I don't say, well, because Nate is white, you know, then therefore – this is about him being white. You get what I'm saying? So where does that come from? Society. I think society it's has generational. I, I think, think it's society. Come from your family. You know, you know people stuck in their ways. You know, um, 
you're taught you're taught things, you know, because, I, I mean, look at these kids. When these kids out there playing, they don't see no black and white. These children out here playing, happy together. Mm-hmm. I think it's something that's mm-hmm. taught to you. Mm-hmm. Just my my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, I, you know what? I, I'm, a, I'm a big history buff. And mm-hmm. I really believe, I still think in this country, it's still early in this country's history is why. And I know a lot of people disagree with me. But, you know, you were talking about earlier that you were uh, um, in Florida and you were, like, in a primarily ba- black uh, community. Yes, I grew um, up in the projects. You, yeah, so, you, so what happened is, so we're, we're looking at this, and I'm just going to go through, like, you know, we're going to go through America's great country had a lot of bad history. So we had, uh, you know, originally the country was 99% white. Then we had the slave trade came over. You know, these people were completely segregated from each other. Segregation occurred up until the 60s, basically. So Mm -hmm. up until the 1960s, we were still segregated amongst communities. Mm -hmm. So we're only talking 40, 50 years where we've actually even been considered to be in the same society. But even once that happened, that didn't mean we were together. There still was tension up until the 80s, 90s. We're only talking like really, like in my history, I say like our lifetime is we're really the only first lifetime where we're technically would say we're in the same community together. So and and even in today's world, like you know, I, I live out in I live out in a very very Caucasian community out in like Thousand Oaks, Westlake, California. A lot of these kids still look at the African American community as a completely different culture than theirs, even though they live in the same society. They see them on a regular basis. They interact with them. They still don't consider them the same culture as they do in a lot of ways, and that is a huge gigantic separation when it comes to how people interact with each other. Mm -hmm. I get it. Yeah. And I think it's just interesting to me because I feel like, you know, uh, experiences in the workplace that you feel that people will treat you differently, just even based upon your name is baffling to me, you know, like something I just, I don't, I don't get it. And I don't see why it has to be in that way, but then we will continue to say that everyone is equal and everyone is treated equal. But if you're having these types of experiences, then there's no way we can say that people are being treated equally. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, hey, well, the treated. Go ahead. Well, go ahead. All I was going to say is that the, no, ahead, the treated equal, the, the treated equally thing is, you know, it's a really cute expression. It's a really, it's a really nice and it's a really feel good expression. And, you know, that's according to the law. You're supposed to be treated equally according to the law. That mm-hmm. doesn't mean society treats you equally, not by any means. That doesn't mean that the average person is going to treat you the same way as they treat their neighbor or anything like that. All that really mm-hmm. means is that you, you're not – and it happens. Let's not kid ourselves. All it's saying is the law is not allowed to treat you differently than another person. But beyond that, the law has no control about how people interact with each other. You know, Shada, you're a very, you're a very loving, caring person. You know, mm-hmm. you you don't know why you, you can't understand why people don't treat that way. That's because you're a very loving person, and that's not the average person. The average person mm-hmm. is the average person is most concerned about themselves. That's the average person. So. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to, be, I'm not trying to be a pessimist in this society, but right. I, I, and I love the concept behind, I love a lot of the things that America stands for. Obviously I love, you know, that all men are created equal. When that statement mm-hmm. was created, that was based on of a person. The person who created that statement was a person of high moral character who truly believed mm-hmm. that. But if you decide mm-hmm. just because it's written down in a law, doesn't mean society believes it. Mm-hmm. Sorry, mm-hmm. so sorry for being a pessimist here. No, no, good no, point. It's, good point. no, it's okay. This is what things we want to talk about because people, they would just, you know, act like these either things aren't happening or these aren't people's, it's people's experiences, and then they don't realize why we have certain tensions. It's like if someone else feels, you know, that they're applying for a job and they have to be concerned that people are going to see their name differently or they're going to look at them, whether it be the based on the color of their skin or whatever they think their experiences are going to be, you know, is, um, is like I said, it's just, I think it's very unfortunate, you know, and it's a reason why people will wonder why people can't get over things. It's like because we're not actually talking about it and we're not actually trying to find solutions. Correct. Yeah. And I want to know, like, for I want to talk a bit about myths, you know, and different stereotypes. Why is it 
that people automatically think if you're highly educated and if you are doing better for yourself and you don't participate in a lot of behavior, you know, and I'm going to specifically talk within the African-American community because that's the only one that I can speak, you know, I can't speak obviously for all black people, which is another stereotype. For some reason, people think that when something happens, all black people can speak for all black people. It's like that's like mm-hmm. That's like saying just because I'm a woman, I can speak for all women. Just because I'm a woman of faith, I can speak for all women of faith. Just because I'm a, an athlete or, you know, whatever. It's like that doesn't work. But, you know, so that's one stereotype we're going to – or one myth that we're going to dispel right now. All race of people cannot speak for one race. Everyone thinks mm-hmm. differently. And so as the question that I was saying is why is it that certain things, whether it be highly educated, you know, being highly educated, whether it be not, you know, um, responding in violence or living that type of lifestyle is always associated with being white. Where does that come from? Oh, that's a long take this one. <laughs> uh, I, I can tell you. It, Nate. <laughs> oh, you know what? Here's here's what I think. I th- here's what I think. I think it has to do with the fact that at I, I think once again I think it's kind of a history thing. I think it's at one point in this time, like let's go back to history, back prior to the early days, the only people that were allowed to vote were white male owner landowners. That was it. These are the people that ran the entire country. OK, um, nobody else was allowed to go to school. Women stayed in the home place. You know, they didn't go to school. These were the co- these were the people that were educated. And and once again, you know, up until a certain time and period like this didn't become a n- normal thing in our society. And I think it's kind of built on two different things, a little bit of history, but then also what we would call more of like a subliminal racist type thing where um, people are associating certain things with certain cultures that technically don't apply anymore. And a lot of people might not even be saying it as a negative stereotype, but it is, it is a very offensive statement, I would say, when you say something like that, because what you're doing is you're kind of taking it back to a period of history in this country that no longer exists, in my opinion, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Well, my question is, who changes history? If it's a history thing, if it goes back, now, who changes history? Is it, is it, is it the job of, um, you know, a of, of black, white, Caucasian, um, you know, Puerto Rican? Who who changes it? You know, who says that we're all mm-hmm. alike? Who says that we all should be treated equally? Who makes that decision? You know, who gives us the fair pass? You know, and I'm speaking because I'm a black woman and it, I, I'm not, you know, I don't judge because I don't see color, but it is harder mm-hmm. for black women. Uh, to be easily judged, you know. If you see a black woman, mm-hmm. single mother, I'm 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 a statistic already. I'm black. I'm a single mother. I'm a woman. You know, so I have mm-hmm. a lot of things that you know going through who I am, but that's not who I'm destined to be. So who changes that? You know, who gives me a fair a mm-hmm. fair chance when I walk in a room, even though my name is Tom Samika? Well, I mean, mm-hmm. my opinion is there is not a person out there that gives you that. There is no people that gives you that because only a, only a people as a whole can give you that. So there's not a politician out there that can give you that. There's no specific person that can give you that because it's, an, it's, it's a societal it's a societal acceptance. And, mm-hmm. and, and in I our think case, Trump, it's been I over time. <laughs> uh, I highly I, doubt that. I was teasing. I, I, I was teasing. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, no, say Trump. <laughs> you know what? It's a joke. And it, that and I get the joke, but I, I don't. There's, I don't think there's a single person out there because all a single person can do is inspire something. Like Martin Luther King definitely inspired something, but that change didn't particularly come because of him. It's because he, he, you know, he inspired a generation. So mm-hmm. um, all I can say is it's, it's it's society that gives it to you, not a. There is no person out there that can do I, it. I agree. I agree. I agree, and I like mm-hmm. what you say. We have to have leaders who inspire, you know, people to want to change, to see mm-hmm. everything as one, you know, you know, one way, no black or white, no in between. It is what it is. So I think, you know, as mm-hmm. you know, Nate, me, did, you know, Sade, all of us have to be leaders and say, hey, this is what we stand for. You know, nobody's different. Everybody, you know, is alike, but different in other ways, not race wise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's funny because. It's not only, you know, what I discovered happens in the African-American community or the black community. It also happens in the Hispanic and the Asian community as well. Whenever someone starts doing anything that's considered to be better, that's considered to be, you know, not whatever they're used to, it's like autom- automatically the person is acting white. And I guess it obviously has to go back to history, why that mindset comes from where we think 
certain things that are pertaining to doing well in life to success are like this, you know, uh, I don't know, this white or Caucasian perspective of that's what everyone is trying to be like. Does that yeah, make sense? I mean, I mean yeah, and I mean, just like minus minus any ideology out there, minus anything at all that, mm-hmm. the reality is the majority of the country is still white. It is. The majority of the mm-hmm. country is still of a certain year. I think it's upwards of 70-something percent now is still of the Caucasian descent. So mm-hmm. you're, it's, you're not going to be there for a while, unfortunately. It's not going to happen, this, this, in my opinion, just based on statistics right now, just like uh, numbers. Like it's going to take mm-hmm. a while. It's going to take – going to maybe take another generation or two before this whatever you want to call it the culmination of like all the intermixing and um of this ideology and everything kind of takes root because you're you're still even in certain parts like i I go to the south a lot for work the midwest Mm -hmm. those people Mm -hmm. there still never encounter a black person like Mm -hmm. i was just talking to somebody a, a co-worker not a co-worker she's one of she handles one of the stores i work with she said she never even saw a black person until she went to college. So mm-hmm. 2016 and still has never seen one. And, and of course, wow. there's any culture shock. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 2016. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. And when you say you know, see, like Nathan, I, you mean in person, right? Just in person. Yeah, of course. I mean, with social media. Oh, okay, because I know uh, everybody got a little TV now. All right, but yeah. that's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. The only like you ain't seen, never seen it, but I get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to go into a song break right now, and I want to give, you know, our listeners some chances to share their thoughts and their opinions, you know, take some comments and calls from social media as well. I know we do have some people calling in who want to share their thoughts on, you know, their experiences in the workplace and everything else. And so I'm having a really good, juicy conversation with you guys already, and I'm so glad that we can be able to talk about these different things that I don't feel are talked about. So Mm -hmm. I'm I'm thankful for this. All right, next up we have Molly Music with Walking Shoes. You're listening to the Sade Champagne Show's special Race and Identity in America episode on Grind Hard Radio. Welcome to Season 2 of the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. We are an inspirational entertainment and music-based talk show with interchanging segments on wellness, health, fashion, entrepreneurship, dream building, spirituality, charities, and other fascinating topics. We interview special guests and celebrities each week, play music from my favorite artists, and engage with our listeners through Q&As, contests, and much more. We are not afraid to push the envelope and challenge traditional thinking. Every episode is different than the one before, and we are committed to bringing the highest quality content that is sure to entertain, empower, and encourage. We look forward to having you with us every Wednesday from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Pacific time right here on Grind Hard Radio. Hi, this is Melissa Joy Wood with the Living with Fearless Joy segment on the Sade Champagne Show, and you're listening on Grind Hard Radio. All right, everyone. Welcome back to the show, you're listening to the Sade Champagne Show's special first ever Race and Identity in America episode, and so I've been so thankful for this special tonight, and I'm glad to be able to have my wonderful panel on. They are some brave soldiers, and so I'm glad to have them here and talk about things that people feel very uncomfortable talking about, and so I'm glad that they don't mind. So once again, our panel includes Nathan Martell, Miss Nika, and Jit Chronicles. And we'll be having some other people possibly calling in throughout the show and taking their comments. And as I told you guys, we're still taking your calls live on air so you can weigh in with your opinions. We're also sharing your thoughts on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, hashtag Sade Champagne Show to ask us your questions and join in the conversation. You know, guys, everybody's always talking about that they want to bring change, that they want to be able to see tensions, you know, racial tensions and these types of things you know, um, removed within our country and within the world, but it's not going to happen if we're not able to talk about it. And so this is why I'm glad we're able to do this tonight. Yes. Great <laughs> so show. Our, great next show. Topic, <laughs> our next topic I want to talk about is the media. How does the media play a role? Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> and, do you, and do you think, yeah, that's how we're going to spend this whole time. This whole time is going to be on this. Well, this next segment is all within this topic. You know, do you think that the media plays a role? Are they responsible, you know, um, for a lot of the, the ways that people believe and how they process things? 
or is it not their responsibility? I want to know you guys' thoughts on this, whoever <laughs> wants to snap at it first. I, I just want to say briefly, the media makes everything and they times it by 10. You know, um, you know, they blow stuff out of proportion. I'm trying to use my proper language tonight. Blow a lot of um, stuff out of proportion, and um, they don't help. They're not helping the issue. They're exploiting it, and that's just how I personally feel. They don't help nothing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, okay. They exploit. Uh, this is how, yeah, I agree with that. I'll, this is how I look at it. I was like, what is the media? The media is a business. What's the media's job? Is the media's job to uh, is is the media's job to give you the news? No, not really. The job is to create ratings. Their job is to create money. It's a company. Mm-hmm. The media is the media is no longer a was is no longer what it was created to be. It's a it's a ratings mm-hmm. game and it's based on money because you're in a unfortunately this is what I would call a side effect of the free market. So they're going to you don't hear you're you're not going to ever hear any cool cute stories about cops going and helping people out. No, you hear about shootings because that's exciting. Mm-hmm. That creates ratings. I mean, especially, I mean, and it's not just the media's fault. We live in a 24 hour social media world. So it was bad when we had 24 hour news cycles back in the nineties mm-hmm. prior to social media. Right. Now they also have to compete with 24 seven social media. So on top of all that, so I, 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 it's not like necessarily their fault. It's kind right. of a, it's a combination of a couple things. It's a combination of us being horrible human beings and feeding on horrible negativity. That's one thing. The other side is they're trying to keep up with a new age of social revolution and technology, which is the other side, because you know, there's the chicken and the egg concept. Are they, are they giving us what we want or are they giving us stuff and then we're just eating it up? And in my opinion, they're giving us what, they, what we want to see because it's the most exciting stuff. Car chases, mm-hmm. shootings, murders. It's the same stuff we see in our, when we go to a movie. We don't mm-hmm. go to a movie to see cute people helping other people. That's not a very exciting right. movie. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. not a very exciting movie. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, think, I think it's a combination of a couple of things. I think it's a combo of the media being in a position where they have to make a living. And I think it's also a combination of us being terrible people and being and loving this nasty stuff that's going on, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Chip? Um, I mean, I think Nathan said a, a, a mouthful, and you know, to me, the media is nothing but like a. Uh, and I got to keep remember we on PG rated show. The media is like a real life soap <laughs> opera, like 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 Nate said. You know, you get a murder, so you get BS. a kidnapping, you get a suit. <laughs> you know, so yeah. it's, it's 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 crazy because folks tend to feed into things like that. You know, um, they're infatuated with what goes on in the media. They're infatuated mm-hmm. with the trends and social media and all that stuff. So, um, but I have to agree mm-hmm. with Nathan. I don't think it's completely the media's fault. You know, because like he said, they, mm-hmm. they're trying to get their ratings. They're trying to get money, money game, mm-hmm. numbers game. No, I you think know, that the media is very irresponsible. They are very irresponsible. They don't think that's a about good word. you know, and yeah. the, and it and it is partly it is a, a huge part of it is their fault. It's, partly their fault, and I think it's partly people's fault because we don't know how to think for ourselves. Like, Nate, you know, has studied marketing and all these different things within social media and how people respond to things, and he sh- he shares with me that I'm one of the, like, I guess he says the top 10% or top 1% that doesn't respond based upon what I see on things, whether it be social media or things that they're either trying to get me to buy or views that they're you know, trying to get me to have. And I don't understand that. How is it that every person has been created with their own mind you know, it's like I'm not like some special person that God created. If we're all special people he created, and why is it that I would be a part of the top 1% or 10% that actually knows how to think for myself and doesn't just eat the junk food and crap that things, you know, push and force down my throat? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm going to give you I'm gonna give you a little example, and uh, I'm sure I'm going to okay. take somebody off with this one. Uh, a couple up A couple months ago, a couple months ago, there was a fantastic uh, – I don't even know how long it was, maybe a month or two, whatever. There was a huge news cycle. Everybody was up in arms because a gorilla got shot in a zoo. Anybody remember mm-hmm. this story? Mm-hmm. I definitely remember yeah. that. Yeah, Har- Harambe. Harambe the, Harambe the gorilla, okay? Mm-hmm. Here's, the, here's your reality. Prior to social media, that would have never even made a newspaper. 
That's your reality. But all of a sudden, everybody on the planet is a gigantic animal activist. And this is bigger mm. than all the killings going on in, you know, in like major killings that are going on in other countries, wars, famine, whatever you want to say. This became our top news priority because, and, I'll, and this is what I'll say, the people that run these things, these marketers, they're not idiots. They're very, very mm-hmm. intelligent people. They know what kind of crap we eat up. Mm-hmm. And, they, mm-hmm. and they spoon feed the crap that they want. And I'm sorry, you know what, it, like if you really did feel like hurt by that animal getting killed, I, okay, I, I won't get mad at you for being upset about that. But the reality is that should have never even made a newspaper. It never mm-hmm. should have had gone, shouldn't have gone beyond an article in some obscure magazine, to be honest. But mm-hmm. all, of a sudden, mm-hmm. all of a sudden, it's above the, the elections going on. And mm-hmm. it's just a perfect mm-hmm. display about how we respond to media in 2016, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. 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 And it's just, like I said, it just amazes me because, you know, people, we have to be honest with the fact that because of what people see in the media, it does determine how they feel about people and how they feel about particular things, you know, because they're used to fed down to them, you know, fed to them over and over, and because and they're not looking at it like, hmm, this is TV. This is not real life. This is a right. small, maybe very, very small, minuscule portion of a community, but I'm not going to look at every person that way. But for some reason, it does play a role in how people treat one another and how they view other people. Of course it does. Yeah. You know? so, and so, and it's frustrating to me because, like I said, you know, uh, you know, pe- the media is very irresponsible in the sense that they don't think to themselves that, you know, and I personally believe you say, Nate, that people that we're being fed what we want. I believe that the media feed people what they want and people just don't know how to think for themselves. So they begin to think it's what they want. I'll give you an example. Because they are easily influenced. They easily influenced. Yes. I will, I will, like, hold on, before you go, I will 100% agree with that statement. 100% agree with that statement. Yeah. Like, no, uh, no that you, you actually, yeah, you actually said that perfect. I actually agree with that statement 100% because Absolutely. we have been, you know what, though? And I mean, and this, once again, but this comes back to kind of our fault that whatever mm-hmm. we see in our news feed is most important to us now. We're basically staring at a blank screen, a screen every day that's telling us what we care about. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. it. And I mean, mm-hmm. and I, mean I, I work in social media marketing. I'm just as guilty of it mm-hmm. than anybody. But literally, they can tell you what they want you to feel about now. And it's way easy. And I know because I do it to people on a daily basis. That's my job as a social marketer. That's what I do. That's probably a well, bad way yeah, to say yeah. it, but okay, we'll go on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shade, you still there? Oh, yes, I'm here now. There we go. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I lost you guys. It's, no, it's okay. You, sometimes when I'm, like, listening to you guys, I mute my phone so that I'm not, like, all doing a bunch of things and making noise in the background. But um, what I want okay. to say on this is to give you, to give you that example. For example, they played, like, the song by Soldier Boy, like, when that was really popular, the, um, the whatever, his, his Superman song that was super popular. I did not like that song at all. You know, I'm not saying that he's not talented in any kind of way, you know, or whatever, but I just did not care for that song. But they played yeah. it so much to where what happens is you end up falling into it and you just say, oh, I love this song, and you begin, you know, being crazy about that record. But I didn't like it at first, and you start hearing it over mm-hmm. and over and over again to where you now accept that you like it. You know what I mean? Because it's forced like upon you. Yeah, I agree. People. I was the same way too, Shadi. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on um, this, Miss Nico? We're talking about, you know, we've been talking about how the media plays a role. Do you think the media is responsible for a lot of the things that people see? Do you think they're irresponsible with the platform they have? What are your thoughts? I think they are irresponsible. I have uh, been a teacher before, and I see little kids, um, girls, who are trying to fit into what they see on TV or trying to be thin or trying to be skinny or fit into of the picture that TV portrays, mm-hmm. um, regardless of race or gender, is just TV shows something different totally than what real life really is, you know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, 
And another thing you got to take into account now, I mean, here's, and here's, a, here's something that nobody really wants to talk about anymore, is that the media is, I mean, this isn't brand new, but the, the media is no longer middle ground, is no longer um, a, an objective source anymore. The, the media has an agenda just like you and I do. There is no difference anymore. So they want to push something. They want to make money. See, we, we look mm-hmm. at, we, we, I think Business some of us propaganda. still believe. Yeah, I still think people are not naive. I don't like to use the word naive because that makes me sound like I'm not, which we all are in my opinion. I think we're all kind of stupid. But <laughs> I think we're all a little naive to think that for some reason these people are able to take a step back and be objective when it's they're they're actually pro- less likely to because of the position they're in because they are are they're actually less likely to be objective because they actually have numbers goals and everything they have to hit on a daily basis that makes them unable to stay objective so but unfortunately we still kind of like I think we still a lot of us still buy into the original concept of what the media was supposed to do mm-hmm. And we still are kind of – we're having like a gleaming little bit of hope. May – I'm a completely into – I, I, I think it's complete trash. That's the, that's, the, that's the area I'm in. I don't believe in, in pretty much any of the media sources at this point. But I still think for the most part, I see – I still say the majority of the population still feels like they're at least getting a somewhat objective viewpoint in today's world. Yeah. I almost want to say it's almost like a controlled environment when I say that with the media – and I'm going to tell you just, just personally about Jay Chronicles. I am not a conspiracy theory type person. Um, kind of don't rock with that. But I do feel like it is, they, they feed you what they want. They, they, they put out what you want to see. You know, so it's a controlled um, environment. And at the end of the day, it's business. It's a business agenda. You know, so um, it's just the media it will, it could be it could be the death of some people and some you know sometimes the media works for folks you know but i think it's a machine it was built to do that from day one it's either going to help you or hurt you period so i want to talk with two i want to highlight two different things so the first thing is you know um recently i've been teaching a lot of workshops with young people, you know, especially a lot of kids and teens and with their parents who are interested because, you know, parents are a lot of times are clueless, you know, and so who've been helping them to understand what social media is really all about and helping them to be more critical thinking because I feel like that's something that's really been diluted in our society is people are no longer critical thinking. They, like, you know, um, like Miss Mika was saying, they just will take things, you know, at first view, and it's like so now the kids are being – you know, bombarded with all these different images and these different, you know, uh, these different thoughts and things that are being, you know, thrown at them, and they're not even able to think for themselves. And then we wonder why so many kids and even adults, obviously, are struggling with depression, anxiety, fears, low self-esteem, et cetera, et cetera. And so I've been teaching, you know, workshops, you know, to be able to help kids and teens and their parents to understand what social media really is about and how to utilize it for themselves, like, really showing them even different things, like, okay, you think that this woman looks like this, but this is actually how she really looks, you know? And it's, it's huge. <laughs> now, exactly. Like, mm-hmm. because those things are huge, you know, like this is what she really looks like. Also showing them, you see these different ads and things that are being playing and coming across. This is to try to get you to buy a particular product. This is to try to get you to see this as being the desirable thing so that they can have your money, you know? And so being able to get right. them more cr- do you think that that's something parents are not teaching their kids these days and that kids are not learning in school? Why is it, you know, why why is it something that's not well taught? Um, my, opinion, yeah, my opinion is because we no longer have uh, – there's, there's, there's a good and a bad way to look at this in my opinion. We no longer have a core set of foundational morals in this country anymore. We have a diverse – we have a diverse, different group of morals. Um, and that's one of those history things, again, um, in my opinion, once again. You know, we used to, whether this country used to all, almost all across the board, have the same kind of ideals. We we're all kind of moving in the same direction. Uh, we're not like that anymore. We're not like that at all. We're completely split. We're actually going two different directions now. So depending on who you talk to, you're going to get a different opinion on what how they should handle any situation based on um, any, anything you talked about. You know, you talked about, the, the, about um, 
how women don't look like that and like magazines and all that stuff. And let's, let's not kid ourselves. Nobody knows that more than I do. You know what I'm saying? And how, how young children and young women should handle that sort of thing. But you know what? You're just going to get a different opinion because we no longer have any foundational issue, like any core foundational morals in this country, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. It's gone. Like Those days are over. Schedule. And I think as far as like parents being in the house these days, you know, a lot of parents, you know, a lot of parents, both of the parents work, you know, and I hate to say it, you know, the technology is almost raising these children these days. Mm-hmm. You know, so 100%. I kind of get where Nathan coming from. You know, it, it, like you say, it's no foundation at the house. There's no foundation in America. It's no set schedule. You know, when we was coming up, hey, we're doing this. We got dinner at 5. Everybody go to bed at 9. This, that, and the third. And now everything is split, divided. Um, you know, again, technology is raising these kids. Yep. And stuff mm-hmm. you do need to start more at, at home. Because that's how you learn mm-hmm. in the first place. It's taught to you by your parents. And that's number mm-hmm. one. And I also want to throw out, you have to talk to these young folks and these kids at a very early age. Kids are super smart. I think some kids are smarter than us adults. You know, so mm-hmm. they get it. They might not process it all at one time, but they definitely get it. You know, so study, I mm-hmm. agree. It, it, I always say this. It starts at home, no matter yep. what. Mm-hmm. It starts at home. Right. We- have to build the kids to be strong to not be influenced by what they see on TV or in school. You know, mm-hmm. I have a 15 year son, and, you know, sometimes influence at school is greater than influence at home, you know. So mm-hmm. you just have to making sure, you you know, a parent can be doing all that they can. But, like I say, TV, you have TV, radio, and the people at school who are teaching their kids nothing working against you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I think, and you know, the funny thing is, I feel like growing up too, it was also, and we all say like we're so old and we're not, we're all still foxy and fly, but just saying when I grew up, I feel that <laughs> it was more so, like it wasn't just the parent raising the child, it was like we all, you know, what's that figure of speech? It takes a village to raise a child, you know what I mean? It's like people would be looking right. out for one another. And like you said, we are going in a different direction. You know, when you were saying um, with social media, I want to highlight another thing, like how people, and even in the media, how people are able to just at the drop of a hat, they can write anything, say anything, post anything. People take it as credible news, which also baffles me. People, just because yes. someone posts something does not mean it is news. It's okay. true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's All I true for it. that matter. <laughs> yes, Exactly. So that's and I think just because of being in this industry, I always give people lots of slack to think, you know, to make sure something is true before I believe it. Because how would I feel if everybody just believes everything that someone says about me? People said a lot of crazy stuff about me, you know, and it's like lies. So I want to talk about this story with um, one of my uh, favorite actresses slash comedians. She is hilarious. Did you guys hear about with Ghostbusters and with? Um, Comedian, I'm going to say Leslie Brown, I believe is her name. I'm going to make sure that I'm pulling it up the right information. But she, you know how Ghostbusters is out right now. Yeah, so you know how Ghostbusters yeah. is out right now, and it's a very popular movie. It's now being made with the four women, and people have been very, very upset. There hasn't been, you know, um, like they're normally used to seeing the movie, and so they literally took to one of the stars' pages, you know, on on. Uh, on Twitter and begin to just bash the way that she looks and just was saying all kinds of things about her, you know, and it's just like, are you kidding me? Like, is this really how we're going to respond to people and treat them? And through social media, it's like she was, yeah, Leslie Jones. And so she, you know, they were literally just calling her all kinds of racist names and all types of things. And it makes you feel like, how can this be in 2016? And people will think just because we have a black president that that means all of a sudden people forget their their um you know classist and bigoted and racist ways and you're just like you know it's crazy what are your yeah. thoughts who wants to go first you nathan <laughs> all right uh you know what's you, you, okay see one thing one thing i feel there's there's very few things i understand well uh social media marketing is one thing i understand well uh when as social media, I always thought, and I, I feel like I'm getting better at this, I always knew as social media got became more prevalent in society that we would actually become worse human beings. And what I mean by that is because now social media gives you the ability to have any opinion with no repercussions. 
So, you know, back in the day, if you wanted to say one of those things to somebody's face, what generally happened? You get your butt whooped. You know, there was consequences to your <laughs> actions. There right. was consequences to your actions. Now you get to sling whatever you want. Any opinion you have is heard and you have no consequences anymore. So there's no repercussions to your actions anymore. Repercussions, for the most part, as human beings, are what keep us in check. That's why you have laws. You know, you have consequences for your actions. Like, that's why you have a judicial system. The Internet, there's no more consequences to any of your thoughts because we can't say this is – you're not allowed to say that because you have the First Amendment. But at the same time, you're, sometimes some people need to get their butts whooped, and unfortunately that's gone. So, you know, you'd say we're in a post-racial society because of black presence. That doesn't matter because now you get all kinds – because there's tons of other things to attack people for besides their, the color of their skin. There's a lot of things mm-hmm. you can attack people for. So mm-hmm. I, I only expect it to get much, much worse. Mm-hmm. I, you know, on the other hand, though, there are repercussions. If people put, have enough backlash and you ha- they have a, their personal picture or their personal profile, they have been, you know, they have been known for people getting fired from their jobs because of things they posted on social media. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, you are but right like, to an extent. But like you're saying, are. it's not the general. It's not the no, here and there, it's not something that's a general thing, too, because I do believe, and I call them trolls, it's people out there that just sit on social media to make sure that you're going to have a bad day, whatever particular day that is. It's people that oh, yeah. that's their job. That's what they do, you know, so that is crazy in a sense. You know, you want to mm-hmm. hear something really disturbing? You know, you want to hear something super, super disturbing? This was the real first sure. year we saw, we, we saw the first paid trolls for political figures. You have a oh whole my gosh, team that's of, horrible. You have a whole and, – and you know what? This is – it's a smart move. It's a very smart move on theirs. They literally have people, an entire mm-hmm. sect of people that are, go out there and bash other candidates because if people start seeing enough nasty Thank comments, you. they start believing mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. – and this is, this is a regular part of – this is a regular part of our society now. So – and, and, and leadership, these are supposed to be the people that are supposed to lead in our country. So if they're doing it, um, I'm not seeing much hope for us as the average person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts, mm-hmm. Miss Mika? Mika's quiet right now. <laughs> well, yeah, Miss Radio the... Diva. <laughs> yeah, she's probably going in and out. She's probably going in right, right now. Okay. So, um, you know, I'll I give me like question. Question. Give your question. <laughs> okay, I was saying, oh, I was saying, what are your thoughts on this? Um, you know, like we were talking about with Leslie Jones, and also on the fact that people can just share anything through social media and the media. And Nate was saying, there's no, you know, repercussions for it. I have noticed um, an increase in repercussion for social media bullying, um, different things. Even with jobs now, a lot of employers check social media before no, hiring people. So I know that people can share anything, but I do think it is some type of repercussion for that. Like even before I invite anybody on a show or you get in any type of business, if I'm your social media friend and you cuss all day and you tell all your business, I don't do business with you because your focus is totally different from mine. You get what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. even though it may not have the repercussions, that we desire, it does have some type of repercussion. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah. It's crazy because, well like said. I said, there can be there can be repercussions, but if the person has like a SpongeBob as their profile picture, nobody's gonna know who they are. <laughs> yeah. so we see a lot of that. You know, we see yeah, a lot of exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. If you got so, I want to go. <laughs> go ahead, yeah. Miss Mika. No, no. I'm saying if Pokemon Go is your screensaver for social media, I'm not adding you anything. I'm not exactly, <laughs> exactly. But I you know, share you know, uh, yeah. One thing I just want to say right now, you know, I've never seen, and this would be really quick. I've never seen so many people deleting friends of 20 years over political opinions, and that's all I've seen this last election. All we do now is we just and 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 we've just been deleting each other. Right? We've deleting yeah. What, yep. We're just deleting anybody who disagrees with us on top of it. So we, we throw opinions, then we delete people. So we're just separating ourselves based on our own personal views now on top of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. deep. Yeah. Well, that's, that's like the um, 
that's like the equivalent of saying you're done with somebody nowadays. Like when people delete someone on social media, that's like the worst. It's like delete, yeah, somebody delete off and your block. Phone. Block means and I don't want to see you again. <laughs> I, I actually, actually long for the days when that wasn't me, so. You know what I mean? Because I feel like we know too much about people sometimes that can like that just really changes a lot of things. Like before, you you know you couldn't just get a get a hold of people right away. You had to wait, and because they weren't at home and they didn't have a cell phone, and so you just understood that mm-hmm. they're not there right now. You're gonna have to wait to get Leave a hold of them. But now they start. We take yeah. it so personal. <laughs> we all do. We're yeah. like, why are you not thinking about me? And the person's like, I was at work. You know, I will get to you when I can. <laughs> yeah. Why you like yeah. my status today? Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Exactly. Uh, I want I want to read a comment from um, one of our listeners. She says, um, when I asked uh, the question on social media, what are some myths and stereotypes that people believe about your race? And she said that black women are always pissed off. This is not true by far. A lot of black women do tend to keep various serious expressions on their face, which causes some people to ask them if they're mad or something. And, and you know what? As 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 uh, whatever you want to call me from California, I was one of those people that bought into that stereotype. I'm not even joking. I bought yeah. into that stereotype. You know why? And well, the thing is, I say that stereotype goes for men too. It's not only just black women. Yeah. I go to work every day, and they say, "Cody, you look so you look so serious. You look so angry." And I'm like, "Well, like this is my normal face. I don't know what you want me to do." <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> This is and, how I look, you know, so. <laughs> but that was so definitely funny. a good comment. It's not just with black women. I think that's a stereotype for black men as well. Yeah, and I mean, no. so, I mean let's not kid ourselves. We're all, a little, we're all a little guilty of it, but, like, especially in movies and stuff like that, that's what women are, black women are portrayed in a lot of movies. That's, like, their right. role they're portrayed. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's why I said the media is responsible for that, because why do people, people would not think that black women were angry all the time if they didn't always show us like that. Because it makes good entertainment. That's why. Well, <laughs> I'm not entertained by it. <laughs> uh, I, I, and I, Go ahead, and Nate. I understand why. No, I, and I get it. And, you know, um, and I don't want to go too much into it, but, like, really that's what it comes down to. You know, we go back to that percentage. Like, in, they're, they're – a lot of races in general that are not white are always cast as the stereotype person because that's how the majority of the people that go to see that movie envision those people to already be. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that makes mm-hmm. sense, but like you still have 70% of the community being Caucasian. So the people that make up the mm-hmm. smaller percentage, they're always being cast as the same roles. Like mm-hmm. they're always cast. You always have the same Asian guy playing the same role in every single movie. You still have the, the Arab guy playing the quickie mart worker all the time. Mm-hmm. Like this is just mm-hmm. this, is, this is how it is currently in entertainment. Yeah. I'm not trying to be mean, but it's, we know it's true. Yeah, and that's why for, it's funny because for me, when most people find things entertaining, I get irritated and annoyed because I know that it's just playing into another stereotype, and it goes back into the myths that we were talking about earlier in stereotypes people believe when they see a particular person, like, for example, like I said, I don't think just because I see they show a white woman with blonde hair who's acting a certain way, I don't automatically think, hmm, this is how all white women with blonde hair act. Right. For some reason, when they right. show people of color on TV, the people automatically think that's their experience. It's like until you have been able to be around 100 million people who act the same, you cannot put a percentage on how people will act. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially not based you on what you see on Right, you would literally have to been a, been around 100 million people who act the same in order for you to now say this is how things are. Right. You know, and so it just amazes me. We're going to go into a song break, and we'll be t- taking some more comments and questions from our listeners. Um, and so right now, guys, we're going to be at a multi song break. All a chance to soak everything in, and also you can so you can take a snack break or restroom break. You know, I like to do that on this show. We keep it. <laughs> Don't want everyone to feel like you're going to miss something. Remember, yeah, I'm going to go get me a piece your... of chicken. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Might I'm as well hungry. just place all these things. Yeah. It's so funny. Um, remember, we're still taking your calls. We're taking your questions and sharing your comments live on air. There's nothing that you guys can't ask us tonight. And so the songs that we're going to be doing right now we have are uh, – we're going to be doing Brandy with Right Here Departed and also Travis Miller with Love Saves. 
he wrote and produced this song, Love Say, specifically for what our country and world are going through. I love the message of it, and I think it's super important to share. And so I want to thank you guys on this uh, two-song break. Get yourself, you know, a snack. Get you some water that you need. Get your questions ready because we're coming back, and we're going to end this strong because we're going to be talking about some solutions and also with police brutality and our experiences with law enforcement because this is really important with what our country is going through. And so thank you guys so much. Keep listening to the Shade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. We'll be right back after this. Do you know of a young adult who has a passion for playing sports and who is determined to reaching their full potential as an athlete? Hi, my name is Michelle, and I'm a transformational sports coach and the founder of Vida Es Oro. I earned a college basketball scholarship, and my purpose is to empower young athletes in reaching their full potential in sports and in life. I provide support and guidance in overcoming obstacles, and in return, the young athlete will build more confidence in their skills and abilities, which will raise their game to the next level. If you know of a young adult who is committed to taking their athletic potential to the next level, contact me by going to my website, www.vidaesoro.com, that's www.v as in victory, I-D-A-E-S-O-R-O dot com, or email me at youthsports at vidaesoro dot com. Hi, you're tuned in to Grind Hard Radio. This is Ayokunle Falomo from the Sharing Your Story segment on the Shade Champagne Show. Keep listening. Welcome back, everyone. Race and Identity in America special episode on the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Our all-star panel tonight has included Nathan Martell, Miss Mika, and Jit Chronicles. We're still taking your calls live on air so you can weigh in with your opinions and your thoughts. We're also sharing yes. your thoughts from Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, hashtag Sade Champagne Show, to ask us questions and join in the conversation. What I've noticed about a lot of my listeners is not only will you guys engage during the show, but you engage a lot after the show. So the show could have been two days old, and they're still posting on social media about something we were talking about, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So our final topic of the night, this is a big one, where we're going to spend the most of our time talking about, is it's going to be a combination um, of law enforcement, you know, and with with that, obviously, we have to talk about within police brutality and then majorly with solutions and solutions involving everything we've been talking about tonight with racial tensions and race and identity in America. So let's start first with law enforcement. I want to know what are you guys' experience with law enforcement, whether it be from Ooh. growing up or whether your experience even right now, and share as much or as little as you want. Preferably much. <laughs> Who wants to take that? Oh, Whoever wants to go, go first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is tough. Hey, you go first. I'm going to wait on this one. Actually, you want me to go first? Um, <laughs> I want you well, to go first. Because <laughs> I just have to keep it uh, uh, brutally honest. I think down here I have definitely been subject to um, racial profiling. Just a very quick story. Uh, a couple of months ago, I was doing some casting calls for a couple of local movies that was in Jacksonville, you know, independent movies. And me and my team, we decided, look, let's make a big weekend out of it. We're going to rent a new, car, a nice car. Uh, we was in a 2016 Mustang. Booked the hotel for the weekend. We was at the Regency Heights. We left. We didn't want to go to Jacksonville Beach because it's a, you know, all our beaches down here are public, but we didn't want to go where everybody was at. So I told my friends, I said, let's go to Ponte Vedra Beach. Very exclusive. Ponte Vedra is a very exclusive neighborhood down here in the community of its own in Duval County. So we said, let's go to Ponte Vedra Beach this time. And um, we were stopped by the police. Now, granted, we did not have on seatbelts. Now, that is one reason why we were stopped, obviously. But I do think that it was a little bit more than that, I think, because he saw uh, several black folks in the car in the area that we wouldn't normally be in and, you know, and stopped us, you know, um, not having our seatbelt that gave us a that gave them a reason to stop us, but it, it wasn't just because of no 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 seatbelt. I could have been driving a Toyota or a Subaru or something like that, and I don't think we would have been stopped even if we had a, didn't have on seatbelts. So I, I I definitely feel like I've I've been racially profiled in this city more than once. You know, wow, it's a city. wow. It's a city. What about you, Miss Miko? What are your experiences? And what do you like to share on this? I guess we'll let her get in a second. Okay. (laughs) Well, I know she's 
Everyone, Miss Mika is on the road, so she's calling into the show while she is she's driving. And tapping out. You know, back to, <laughs> yeah, she's tapping yeah. in and tapping out. So when Be she safe. turns back in, then she can um, answer the question. So you go ahead, Nathan. All right. So let's let's uh, uh, look. I'm not. Gonna, I have not had a tough time with the cops. Let's not kid ourselves. I'm not going to lie. I'm not gonna <laughs> I've had. I have not. I have not had any tough times with the car. And here's and, and there's a couple reasons for it. And I'll tell you why. First of all, you know, I live in, we live, grew up in Southern California. I mean, if there's one place that is pretty accepting of almost everybody, it's pretty, I mean, not of everybody, but probably more than the rest of the country, it's Southern California. Let's, you know what I'm saying? So we are one of the most, I don't like to use the word progressive, but we're one of the most progressive states when it comes to the concept of race relations in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I, you know, I have, I work, I have a podcast with another person, another person that I do this with. Uh, I'm going to give him a little shout out, Morgan Freelance, African-American male. We talk about this sort of thing. And he actually grew up with me in Southern California. We actually went to a private mm-hmm. school together. I mean, that's as white as it gets. So mm-hmm. um, we, but he even told me, and he's like, and he's, he's, you know, he's, he's like a guy, he wears like, I mean, he, I'm not going to, I'm trying not to make fun of him. He dresses kind of nerdy and everything. Like he, I'm talking polos mm-hmm. and khakis and everything. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like the mm-hmm. as least threatening as you can get. And he mm-hmm. even says to mm-hmm. me, like, look, I've been, he's like, I've been pulled over just because I know I was black. And, mm-hmm. and I say, and I don't, I don't deny that. And here's the thing is I don't deny any of that. Like I'm not one of those people that says it doesn't happen. I know it happens. Look, I, I understand that we as People look at other people different. That's the reality again. But so I, I'm not one of those people that's going to sit back and say like this doesn't happen because I know it happens. And I think, and even most people, because I'm I'm not one of those people. I'm not one of those crazy like left wing hippie liberal people by any means. I'm actually as far from that as possibly can get. But I think anybody who understands, like, at least history in this country is going to at least be smart enough to understand that we don't treat people equally as much as we would like to think we do. My personal opinion on the subject. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Miss Mika, jump in at any time when you want to while we're chatting about this. I know you're on the road. So, for me, I feel like my experiences are totally contrary to what you would hear, especially from what we're seeing in the media with black people and black women, you know, with police. You know, me growing up, and, you know, obviously you know the type, as I share with you guys, the type of environment that I grew up in, the type of neighborhood. I was always a part of leadership programs with law enforcement since I was young. So I had, oh, wow. I was used to so I was used to community policing since I was in elementary school. I was a part of D.A.R.E. I was a part of GREAT, you know, um, in both elementary and middle school. When I moved to California and I was in high school, I was a part of a leadership program with law enforcement where it was like me and other uh, other high-excelling students at school where we did like an anti-drinking, you know, port, you know, uh, and basically anti-drinking uh presentation that's what we'll call a presentation that's amazing. and you know because obviously that struggles a lot you know in high, and I was chosen as one of the people in my school to be a part of it I've always had a great relationship with law enforcement you know since mm-hmm. I was young I haven't gotten in trouble with the law and I you know like I said I was used to com- community policing and I would always when I talk <laughs> to officers whether it be from in my school or in my community they were always shocked because they're like man you see us so differently I'm like well you guys have treated me in this way and I know that you know, that your heart is, and like I said, I'm not going to say once again that there are not people who don't do, who don't racially profile and do stereotypes and those types of things, but I'm just sharing you with everyone my experiences. You know, my experiences, of course, I've had a couple people who didn't have the most pleasant attitude, but I didn't look at it like they were looking at me differently. I just felt that they weren't, didn't just have the best attitude, because like I said, honestly, if I wish she could have had one of my best friends call into the show, I'm not going to put her name on blast, but we'll just say she is, she's blonde hair blue-eyed, and she's totally, don't say any names, Nathan, because you will get it if you say any names. And she is oh, totally like I don't, terrified. Oh, like I don't already know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> and she's, she's totally <laughs> terrified of the police. Like, she's totally terrified of the police. She's terrified of law enforcement. Complete opposite of what I am. And in our situation, she's always shocked, you know, and so it's just funny because it's totally different in our society than what we would see. And for me, when I show, when I see images of police officers that are negative, you know, thankfully, because of my experiences and because I can think for myself, I don't automatically think that that's the majority or even 
a large portion. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Because I've only had Absolutely. experiences with ones who were kind and caring and, you know, and, and who were helpful in the community. They were community policing. And so those are my experiences. And Sade, it's it's way more good cops than it is bad cops, and I I, I have to I have to throw that out there because a lot of times when I discuss uh, police brutality or just police in general, um, you know we're mm-hmm. not talking about the average officer friendly. We're not talking about mm-hmm. the neighborhood uh, neighborhood watch um, police mm-hmm. officer. You know we're not talking about the mm-hmm. uh, dare officer. You know uh, so it's way more good officers than bad. So folks always keep mm-hmm. that in mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean. Okay. Yeah, Go ahead. Go ahead, Nate. Oh yeah, and I I think that's that goes back. I don't want to go back off topic, but once again, we're talking about we only see the stuff in the media that is the bad stuff. We mm-hmm. only see mm-hmm. we only we only see the point zero 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 one percent. We never mm-hmm. see mm-hmm. we never see the everyday the cop showing up talking people out and going home because mm-hmm. it's not exciting. Mm-hmm. We don't see that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Right. That- yeah, it's true. And so it's like, it's unfortunate because I feel, you know, we have to think about this. Is the media the one that's portraying this and putting these images out there or is it, you know, what is it? And so it's like, we have to really think about, that, you know, in the sense, mm-hmm. because as we said, we all know that majority of them, you know, are, but unfortunately there are some police departments that do need to be like totally shut down and just revamped totally. But like we said, we all agree, you know, unless Miss Mika says differently when she calls in, okay, someone is calling in from five, five, nine, and they want to chat on air. So I'm going to take them right away if you guys don't mind. So we're going to, uh, yeah, area code, area code five, five, nine, four, seven, four, area code five, five, nine, four, seven, four. We're going to take you into the show right now. Hi, Miss Shawnee. How are you this evening? Hi, Donna. I recognize that voice anywhere. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I saw that you were on right now, so I thought I'd share some love from Fresno and say hello and see how you were doing. Thank you so much. We wanted to um, – I'll let you do a shout-out in a sec because I know you have a charity event that we're doing next weekend that you want to Yay. promote. But first, I'd like for you to, if you can you share your thoughts on, we're ta- our episode tonight has been all about race and identity in America. And what are some of your thoughts, you know, whether it's um, through racial tension in our country? Because, you know, you're in Fresno. You work with a lot of at-risk teens. You know, um, for everyone listening, Donna is of Caucasian descent, but she works with kids of all different races and ethnicities, you know. And so I would like to know what are some of your thoughts either on, things we've been seeing in our culture with law enforcement or police brutality or or even just with racial tensions in our country? Um, You know, we we actually had a a big panel discussion over at Mm -hmm. our church um, not too long Mm -hmm. ago, and we brought in churches from all across this valley. We brought in churches that were predominantly white, we brought in churches that were predominantly African American, we brought in churches Mm -hmm. that were uh, Asian descent, we brought in churches that were full of um, Hispanic, and it was a really Mm -hmm. amazing discussion uh, over an entire weekend about Mm -hmm. perception, and Mm -hmm. you know, different people perceive things that are done and said in different ways and um, the the big consensus at the end of the all of the discussions which some were very heated and some you know were very um, eye opening was you know we are all here in America doesn't matter what color you are doesn't matter how old you are how rich or how poor you know mm-hmm. I, we 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 were all created by God and and we are all here. We should be, you know, with all the turmoil in our world, we should be, you know, blessing each other. We should be lifting each other up every day instead of trying to tear each other down. Um, mm-hmm. And a a lot of the conversations that we had in these discussions were. You know, there's a lot of anger over things that have happened in the past. And 
those things are brought into our current and our, you know, our future. And I, I really think the discussion that came out was us parents, we need to teach our children that we should love our neighbors. We should we should go out in this world and, you know, be a light in the world instead of dark in the world because there's too much dark already. And um, um, I, think, I think as parents, I mean, I'm a parent of two children, and I think, you know, if we train our children up to be angry at the world, um, mm-hmm. I think that does them a huge disservice. If we train as parents if we tra- and grandparents, if we train them up to be, um, you know, kind and, and courteous and want to go out there and help someone else, um, I, I think we'd have a much fear, friendlier, um, less volatile world out there. Um, mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Mhm. What are your thoughts? Well, we agree with you. You know, uh, well, I can't say we because once again, I can't speak for everybody. But I would say that I feel, you know, I definitely agree with what you're sharing in that, and that's so important. You know what I mean? Is uh, that, you know, if parents and actually Mika was talking about that, Nate was talking about it, you know, uh, Jit as well, and me, you know, that parents have to be the ones to start this. You know. That's where it starts at home. You know, I'm gonna need more people in the world something. like Ms. Donna. We yeah, really I'm gonna say I'm gonna say something to rain on the parade real quick. Um, yeah, she, her her ideology and everything like that, I I could tell, and I don't know her very much. Was very, it sounded very like theology based, very with a religious mm-hmm. foundation. How how close am I? Can can, can I tell you? I I will tell you. Yes, I I you know, have Christ in my life for sure. I will tell you, I I served in the United States Army for four years. I was in combat. I was overseas um, in South America. Um, I have raised two children almost all um, on my own as a single mom. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, life, life has had its ups and downs and it's had its struggles. It has not been... Uh, cushy ride, um, but mm-hmm. I, I have learned. I have learned that you know, and I'm a cancer survivor, so I, I have oh, wow. learned you know life. Life's too short. You never know when it's. You never know when what tomorrow's gonna bring. Amen. So, mm-hmm. and, yeah, I mean, and I wasn't trying to, and I wasn't saying that in a bad way. What I was, what I meant by that is. What you have to understand is a lot of people, because of the basis of what you were talking about, they actually find that a very offensive, and that's the world we live in today. Mm-hmm. Your theology-based mm-hmm. approach to solutions is actually frowned upon in today's world, and a lot of people actually despise you for that thought process, and that's why we have so much confliction, unfortunately, in today's world. Not that I don't agree with mm-hmm. you. I'm just saying what sounds so nice to some people, it sounds nice to me, to be honest, is actually very, very much of a turnoff to a lot of our country these days. Mm-hmm. And that's so the well, like, almost you know, like a cliche, almost like a. I, I get what you're saying. I respect what you're saying. No, I totally respect it. I love it. I'm just saying this is why we're having a hard time in today's world is because what seems like a great thing to us is not a great thing to other people. So we're having conflictions in even basic things like how we need to treat each other, like you know the golden rule of you know doing to mm-hmm. others. We don't live mm-hmm. by these basic principles of life anymore in our society. Mm. Right. That's we real. Yeah, because people, yeah, because yeah, because people are treating people based upon they're going to say, "I'm going to treat you the way you treat me." And so what happens is they do that eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. So not everybody's yep. walking around with no eyes, no teeth, and no arms. It's like how how maimed do we all want to look? You know. And so yeah, yeah I know. think that's huge. And Don, it's funny, I want to say this too, when we were talking about stereotypes earlier, when Miss Mika was talking about being a single mom, Donna is Caucasian and she's a single mom. And so that's something that we can come together on and seeing that those are experiences that not only black women and, you know, uh, and people of, of color experience, but there's a lot of white women who are single moms too. You know, it's mm-hmm, it doesn't look the same way in society, but, it, you know, these are things that we can come together on and people can see we have a lot more in common than what we think. 
Well, it, yes. it, you know, I'll tell you, I, I do volunteer work, and Shadi knows this very well, and she does it with, right along with me. We do volunteer work with at-risk teenagers, and um, this is not one race. This is all races. This is, mm-hmm. you know, the, the the white kid who has a doctor as a father. It's the... African American man who's out there, kid who's out there, you know, busting his butt every day, working really hard at his job. Um, this is anyone, any color, any any, mm-hmm. you know, age. These a lot of mm-hmm. these kids will tell me they'll say, you know, I'm angry at the world because of my circumstance and my situation. My my mom's a single mom. My dad's in prison. Um, you know, this person in my family was an addict. And, you know, I try to tell these kids, um, you know, no matter no matter what life has thrown you, no matter what your circumstances, you know, we all have difficult things. No matter where you come from, you always have difficult things that you're going to go through in your life. I said, mm-hmm. but you have the power. I tell these kids, you have the power today to change your mm-hmm. tomorrow. You don't have mm-hmm. to become an addict. You don't have to become a gang member. You don't have to, you know, join a life of crime. You you can change your tomorrow, and you have the power to become whoever you want to be. And mm-hmm. these kids are like, well, how? Because I've never been taught that. And then we show yeah, them. But- the program I don't want um, there that can help them. Donna, I don't want to cut you off, but we do have some other callers on the line. So I'm going to give you like sure. 30 seconds. If you can share with everyone in 30 seconds the chair, the huge charity event we have coming up with Grizzly Youth Academy next week in 30 seconds, okay? And then I'm going to give awesome. you some more callers that are on the line. Go ahead. So Grizzly Youth Academy is a National Guard um, Youth Challenge Program in San Luis Obispo that helps at-risk teenagers that are 16 to 18 years old and struggling in high school. They go live on base for about six, five and a half months, and they do a whole year of high school in five and a half months. This program helps these teenagers reclaim their lives um, and graduate high school, and then they follow them for another year, and they have a six, uh, 96% success rate with these kids. Well, we awesome. are Can you share with them the event? Yes, we are doing a fundraiser um, next month. We are we are doing a fundraiser on um, this month on August 13th at um, Chuck Chancy Park in Fresno with the Fresno Grizzlies. Um, they're a major league baseball team, um, and the fundraiser is going to go to um, fund scholarships for these kids once they graduate um, Grizzly Youth Academy, and it's also going to go for the um, sneakers, gym clothes, and toiletries that some of these kids that have no money going into this program need when they come in. Um, It's about $300 worth of supplies per kid. So we're raising money. Fresno Grizzlies has um, agreed to help us raise money for the scholarships and supplies, and we love um, to see your support, please find me on Facebook, Donna Hummer, or go to Grizzly Youth Academy. And if you, Thank you. can attend the event, we'd love to have you. And if you can't, we'd love to have your donations. Awesome. Thank you, Donna. I'll post more information about it. We're going to for our next caller. Have a great rest of the night, okay? Thank you, too. And Shawty Champagne will be singing the national anthem. She's amazing. Yes. I will. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. Have a good night. I'm going to get to the rest of the callers. Love you. We Thank have- you. Bye. Hi, thank you. All right, we have area code eight one eight four six two. We're bringing you into the show. Hello, 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 hello. hello. <laughs> hey. How are you guys doing? Hi. Uh, I'm doing. We're doing well. We How are you doing tonight? I'm doing fantastic, Sade. I'm listening to your show. I'm enjoying it. Great conversation. What's up, Nathan? That's my good friend. He gave oh. me a shout out. Yeah, that was. This is my buddy yeah. Doug that I was actually talking oh, that's about. Doug. Like, okay. Podcast that's with what's sometime. up. Yeah. So. Awesome. Hey, Doug. Glad to have you on, man. Thank so we've been talking about race and identity all episode long tonight. 
our, at this our, for our final segment, we've been talking about law enforcement and police brutality, and you know, and Nate, Nathan was telling us that you look like one of the most unassuming, you know, um, people that someone could ever see. And he said that you said you've even had experiences with law enforcement that weren't very pleasant. Indeed, that's very true. And and first of all, before I get into it, I wanted to say thank you to you guys. I think having the conversation is one of the most important you know, things that we can do to exactly. move everything forward, you know. So the fact that you guys are having mm-hmm. different points of view on the show at the same time in a civil manner, I think that's great work, big work. So right, thank, you. thank you guys for doing that. Um, but, yeah, thank I object to be calling nerdy, uh, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. I do, I do I wear do. polos. I do wear khakis. You know, it's, I joke Being about having a suit. Awesome. <laughs> I joke about keeping a, a suit jacket in the back of my car hanging up as if I was going to a corporate job because law enforcement tends to leave you alone when they think you're part of, you know, corporate America. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I do want to give Donna a shout out for her, um, her words and her foundation and everything. It sounds to me like what she's dealing with is fixing the, some of the cultural and economic divides that we have. But when we talk about mm-hmm. this racial divide specifically with police, it is a black and white problem. You know, mm-hmm. it is, mm-hmm. that's the conversation that we're having. It is what and it so is. And so when myself, shooting Kai in Westlake, you know, driving a Camry, nice, clean, looking professional, and get pulled over from the front, mind you, not mm-hmm. the police is not following me. He pulls me over, he sees me that I'm black, flips me, kind of pulls me over for, mm-hmm. you know, for tags that he couldn't have seen. Mm-hmm. And the, these things, these, these obvious profiling things happen to me and my brothers and sisters all the time. You know, we, we wow. hear about the terrible ones. We, we hear about the ones that, that turn tragic. But the, mm-hmm. the profiling is real, you know. And I grew up in Ventura County, as Nathan was saying. It's 1% to 2% black. So not only yeah, are we a minority, there's barely any of us. <laughs> barely. So we yeah, stick barely. out like a sore thumb and then some, you know. Yeah. And that's, that's my experience. I'm not you know, that bold as to speak for everyone's experience with the police. And while I appreciate them keeping us safe very, very much, I am a supporter of, of blue lives. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? You, you mm-hmm. can't ignore the, the disparity of treatment. You just can't. Mm-hmm. And see, this is the thing. I was sharing with one of my best friends recently, and she didn't catch herself saying this, but I caught it. And, and I'm glad that we could have this conversation because that's the only way that there can be healing. Why should an African-American person have to wear a suit and a tie all the time in order to look professional? It's like nobody else's other races, you know, and, and for people to not, for a police officer to not, you know, who already has a racial bias, to not look at them as if they're doing something. That makes no sense to me. Like, you don't see other okay. ethnicities. There's specifically Caucasian people walking around all day in business suits. And a lot of times, a lot of people who are really professional sometimes don't even wear suits. They wear, like, you see, like, um, what's his name? Mark from Shark Tank is mostly just in a shirt and shorts. It's like, you know, yes, yeah, Damon, right, yeah. you know, Damon from Shark Tank wears suits all the time, but that's just the way he likes to dress. And so I think that that's to say something about our society that we only feel comfortable if an African American, not all, but people that have a racial bias feel uncomfortable, only feel comfortable if an African American is wearing a business suit or a tie or looks like they're going somewhere. It's like you can't dress like that all the time. It's not, it's not practical. <laughs> now, Sade, right. you know, Sade. Yes. Can I, Part of the privilege. Th- you, yeah, you know, I'm going to have to throw something out there to be super controversial, right? Because that's what I do. Do it. That's what I do. Do it. Okay. So I'm. A, this is where this is where we're going to play a little devil's advocate, unfortunately. Okay, I'm okay. looking at statistics right now, and mm-hmm. it says this is statistics from the DOJ. Okay. It says despite making up 13 percent of the population, 18 to 24 year old black men make up 52 percent of the homicides in this country. So receiving or that giving? Means, what's that? Yeah, that's your receiving question. Receiving or giving? Clarify. Yeah. Clarify. They, they, Okay, so they commit 52% of the homicides in the country, being, while only making up 13% of the population. And so what, what part of the country? Is this, is, the country. This, is, this, is, this is countrywide. This is from the DOJ. This they is can't. from the Department of Justice. I, this no, is a I don't statistic. That's possible. If you were to tell me what is that? Chicago, what is that what, what is your hold conclusion on, hold on, hold on, from hold on. that? Hold on, hold on. Okay, what I'm ahead. saying is this. Go ahead. What I'm saying is this. I'm just saying like this. And this is I'm not I'm not clarifying this. I'm saying 
the statistic here is this. So the question is, where does the correlation occur? So you're saying, and this is where the devil's advocate comes in. Is some of this, is this completely made up in this people's head? Or is there some, something in like certain people's minds that give them a feeling why they should feel this way? And I'm not giving either way, but I'm going to give the devil's advocate to this side right now. So I'm giving a statistic mm-hmm. here from the DOJ, completely unbiased. This is not. This is a completely mm-hmm. unbiased statistic that shows a disparity between, and I'm, and I'm, I'm, you don't fall into this age range anymore, Doug, because you're old now. Well, can but, I ask <laughs> one more clarification? Of what years? What time frame was the study? This is well. This one's showing 2013. So I don't know. If okay, just the one year. Just the one year. You're taking statistics from one year. Well, it says and trying to lay it, it paint it across the whole issue here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm is gonna that read this. I'm gonna read. It. I'm gonna read it word for word. Despite Read making up 13, uh, despite making up just 13 percent of the population, blacks committed half of the homicides in the United States for nearly the last 30 years. DOG statistics show that between 1980 and 2008, black people committed 52 percent of the homicides. In 2013, black criminals committed 38 percent of the murders, while whites accounted for just 31 percent. This and is you the, the Department of Justice. Is that, that what yes, this is coming. This is coming from the Department of Justice. Though this, actually, I take that back. The numbers are from the Department of Justice. The, then there's an add-on from another website. So, well, okay, my, but the, I would love to my, address so that. What I'm saying is this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. And, all I'm saying is this, and all I'm saying is this. All I'm saying is this. We're, we're talking about where all these things are coming from. So the thing mm-hmm. is, some people are thinking, see, and, and this, is where, this is what I want to clarify, because you have different points of view out there. You have points of view yes. like your side, like for an example, a Doug, a Doug, like Doug's point of view is completely justified. Doug has been a law-abiding citizen his entire life. Has never done anything. Mm-hmm. And, well, I take that back, Doug. We we did a couple of illegal things when we were growing up. Um, we were minor, mm-hmm. <laughs> but nothing of any importance. But and then you have other people that you would say. So he would say this is unjustified. Then you have other people that say certain things are justified, and unfortunately. What we're not seeing is we're not seeing both sides come together very often and talking about it together, which I think is what we're mm-hmm. doing right now. So I'm showing right. you a different point of view because a lot of people out there that don't support a lot of the movement, the Black Lives Matter, are looking at these statistics and regurgitating these statistics. And they're using mm-hmm. that as their justification. And this is why you can't mm-hmm. have a lot of people coming together. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. No, and it so makes I'm sense. Saying, you got a good, valid point. I'm gonna do a personal research on that myself, but I definitely appreciate the information. Yeah, and I'm not yeah. by any no. means. This is by no means a justification for anything. All I'm saying mm-hmm. is I'm giving you the devil's advocate reasoning because I know there's people listening good. out there right now. There's people that, that are listening right now that are saying, "Oh, but these statistics show this." Okay, yeah. they are okay. not sitting down I, having right. this conversation. Right. No, I understand the statistics, but what I'm saying is, first, we need to see what was it, like, people don't even think to themselves, like, not all, but, you know, just realize, I'm, I'm not trying to generalize here, but think about what was actually happening in the situation, where in the country are these things taking place, because it's like, I feel like people will just sometimes look at the statistics, but they don't actually go and try to see something for themselves. It goes to, like, you Right, and that's what I want to do. I want to do a personal I evaluation do. and research of myself. And, yeah, You're right, I, and, I, I agree and, with and the reality is, I, I refuse to believe. I refuse to believe, though, that someone's going to tell me that half of the crimes that were done were being done by African-American people. It's like, if you're going to tell me that, I also need to know, were they being jumped? Was there something that was happening with them to where they okay. felt that they were, that their lives were at risk? Yeah, yeah, where, gonna, when, and how, and that's, gonna, and that's totally yeah, where, I agree. That's totally sure. true. And may I address the yeah. statistics as well? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, Nathan, Nathan, I've seen statistics on Facebook that said something to the effect of, you know, the percentage of, of white males killed by the police was greater than the, the black males killed by the police. Now, without mm-hmm. taking into account the, the ratio and how many percent yeah, of they, course. they represent, so my point is you can mm-hmm. manipulate any piece of data and remove one mm-hmm. qualification mm-hmm. and change it the whole way. That's not taking into account the proximity in which those, those uh, murder uh, suspects were living in proximity to their neighbors or their social no, and mm-hmm. economic background. So many things that you're not mm-hmm. taking into account. So that's 100%. not a fair predictor of why no. these people, cops mainly, would have this bias. 
You know what I mean? Of course. And, mm-hmm. yeah, and, I, and that's what I said. And that's why I said I'm not justified because I'll give you an example, and I'll tell you right off the bat. Yes, according to the statistic, more people did go white, get killed. More white people got killed by cops. But percentage-wise, mm-hmm. blacks are way higher than whites. If you go percentage-wise, mm-hmm. there's no doubt about oh. that. So, but what I'm saying is, what my big point, and I know we got to get out of here quick. My big thing is no, that we're not going to get out of here. We can go. Picked. We can go on a little bit. So we're going to go. Okay. This, everyone, so, this episode is going to because it's really starting to get juicy right now. So this episode is going to okay. go Good. over. Good. I'm glad hey, to say that. Okay. Go oh. ahead. What I'm saying is everybody, unfortunately, in society, we're going to go back a little bit to that social media. A lot of them are already in their camps and they've decided where they sit. It doesn't matter what mm-hmm. the statistics are. It doesn't matter what anything. We've mm-hmm. already decided where we sit. Um, mm-hmm. and, we've decide, and we've already decided that – and there's a couple things. We've already decided that we have to either be pro-black or we have to be pro-police. But we can't be both mm-hmm. for some reason. That is, yes, we can be I, both. For some reason – yeah, I, I, for some reason out there in the social media realm, in the social media la-la land, if I'm mm-hmm. pro-police, that means I'm anti-black, or if I'm pro-black, mm-hmm. that means I'm anti-police. But as, a, mm-hmm. as an average thinking human being, I can be pro-police and at the same time be anti-police brutality. You know? Mm-hmm. And I feel mm-hmm. – but I, we've, we've all decided that this has become a political issue, and we have to pick yeah. teams with each other. And unfortunately, yeah. that's the world so, um, I feel like we live in today. Um, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna let you keep talking in a second, but I'm gonna bring in another caller, and I also want to um, say take a couple comments as well from social media. So Donna's still listening in, and she says, "Shade, I'm a white woman who walks into Macy's, and I have security follow me if I'm in sweats. If I go in my business attire, no one looks at me. It's not a race thing. See, I would have never known that. You know what I mean? Obviously, I don't. You know, um, I don't." see things from whether people being racist against me or not, but I would not know that white people, that there's a white woman who also feels that she gets followed around in a store based upon what she looks like. And then, I can um, imagine. Also we got a, and also we have a comment that says they're loving it. I'm going to bring in another caller, 805-765. He's a friend of mine who's been listening in. Aaron, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing fine. How about yourself? Awesome. Welcome to the Sade Champagne Show. And, Doug, we're going to keep you in on the show as well. And so I want to know, what are your thoughts on, because, you know, we've been talking about a lot tonight, but first on this particular topic, what are your thoughts that you'd want to share on what Nathan was sharing and the statistics and also with law enforcement, police brutality, any of your experiences? Oh, and, and everyone okay. listening, Aaron, Aaron is of African-American and Native American you know, descent. And like I said, usually I don't share people's races, but because we are on a <laughs> show about identity, we are going to share everyone's race so that way everyone can understand, you know, where, they're, where that person's coming from. All right, go ahead. Okay, so, so two things. One thing I could uh, agree with and then one that I can't really, uh, I can't really trust or can't really – agree with is the uh the statistics um i just don't trust it because there's so many variables to like um basically how many like how many people were let off like as far as like caucasian counterparts from the african americans that that were charged there's a lot of things that could play into that like why that number is that number so i don't really believe into the uh like i i i need, I need more details like how when they said I need the where, when, why, how, like I need exactly. that too. Mm-hmm. I can't just go off of somebody's number that you know, that uh, you know they could have made something up. They could have. I don't. I'm not really for that. But the one thing I do, I do really like what they uh, he said about the the anti police and uh, pro black or anti black pro police. Um, I can agree with that. It's 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 the division right now. Um, Mm-hmm. And it's it's I don't know where it's coming from exactly, but I do know that it exists because you know it, it go. I see a lot of stuff on social media, especially it's either you know anti-police like, but if you're if you're anti-police, then it's like uh, you know it's a problem for like they they make it into a, a race thing. I feel like it, it shouldn't really be about a race thing. It should be like. You know, you could be pro pro police, but if if you if you're not standing for the brutality, then that's that's a whole different uh, topic in itself. Because there are there are crooked police, there are um, people that are not there for the right reasons, and mm-hmm. um, but but then there also are the good police out there that are actually you know 
uh, honor the badge and and protect and serve uh, the community. So I mean, right. Uh, it's, mm-hmm. it's, and, and then, uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry about that. No, go ahead, Aaron. You keep going. No, go ahead. Um, and also, uh, as far as the uh, being like, especially with the all the the Black Lives Matter and the All Lives Matter thing, uh, one one thing I I saw someone bring up a real good point is that the all lives can't matter until Black lives matter. So so they're they're counter they're countering this 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 movement for the Black Lives Matter and awareness of what's going on with us in our community with the all lives matter. It's almost like a like a um like they're saying, you know, like oh don't forget about all these other people, but that's the thing is like all lives can't matter until our our black youth and black uh like adults are are getting you know treated with the with the proper respect and 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 like a human like some people mm-hmm. are, they don't even see us as human or talk to us as humans and I go through that with people uh you know on a daily basis whether it's at work whether it's at the store whether you know it, it's it's a mm-hmm. uh, it's a it's a problem so I, I just wanted to touch bases on that too because that was a good point that I wanna, it, um, it my friends brought up. No, it is a good point too because um and I wanna have you share your thought on something else. Also caller two two eight four four seven. I see you in the studio. I'm going to bring you on because I see you've been waiting very patiently to share your thoughts. So I'm gonna bring you on in a couple minutes. Thank you for being patient mm-hmm. with us. So um um, that's area code 228447. We're going to bring you into the show in a couple minutes. So, Aaron, I want you to share your, your experiences with work because you and I talk about this often, you know, and, um, and share your experiences that you felt with um, whether it be racial tension or people treating you differently at the workplace. Okay, well, one thing I noticed is uh, there is uh, the privilege thing that exists, um, and it's and it's more like uh, people that have, you know, kind of got their job secured a little bit. They're they're a little more comfortable in their position. They they might know somebody that's higher up. Like they say, like, it's not what you know, it's, it's who you know. And there's a lot of truth to that because uh, I know it's for myself. Um, like when I was first brought on at my job that I've been at for three years now, um, I was always hustling, always, you know, first one in, last one out. Um, you know, if something came up with one of my coworkers, anything came up, I would always be like, Hey, you know, I got I got you, you know, don't worry about it, go home. I'll I'll wrap the all uh end the night, you know, don't worry about it. And uh, I noticed that I was um I was doing that a lot and, and, and always kinda looking out for others and doing more than what my job title was and then uh so like as the years as the years go on and pass, you start to see things a little bit in a different view because you've been there for a long time dealing with these people for for you know years now, and you start to get to know people for who they are and their character, and then you uh you start to notice you know it, it, it's not you know a lot of people that are reciprocating you know what I'm doing. And and I didn't. And it's not like there's like a ch- a checklist to see how many times I've covered and got people's back. It's not about that. It's um it's more about like just stepping up. And and, and if we're a team, like you know, we should act like it and we should treat each other as a team. Like and you know, look out for each other when it's time to. And uh, I, I know. Well that, said, Aaron. Yeah. I, I noticed that. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, it'll be it'll be time for someone else to step up, and you know. I'll, I'll wait for somebody to step up and it won't happen. So, you know, you kind of get the short end of the stick sometimes. And as after that happens a while, it's like you either say something or you just got to deal with it. So I, I chose to speak up because every, I, I feel like we're all equal. Um, and that's, you know, men, women, whatever race you are, we're all equal. We're all humans. And uh, I, I would just, um, I would notice, things as the years go by that you know people really look at looking out for themselves not not playing like as in a team type of mindset and uh it's it, it it's kind of like you I, I i decided to speak up and let at least be uh clear and let it be a, uh just kind of bring it to people's attention and so they're aware of it and you know if you can't change people so 
they're gonna they're gonna do what they're gonna do regardless. But I think for me personally, speaking up is a is is the best thing to do because you're you're not trying to tell them like, hey, I'm better than you. You're just saying, hey, look, we're all in this as a team together. You know, um, you know, there might be a time where I need you to you know cover me, and if if you can't do it, it's cool. But uh, but let me know. You know what I mean? Let's let's we gotta communicate with each other a little bit more, and that's that's a thing that. Right there, if there's no communication and people are just cutthroating each other and, and and stepping over each other and there's just no communication, just just you know that's that's a wrap right there in itself. Like, mm-hmm. so yeah, well are, said, well said. So if you're if you're, ahead, if you're one like, of the people, go ahead, Nathan. If you're one of the if you're one of the people I mean, that I need to decides, go ahead, if you're one of the people that decides to stay quiet you know, and just bite the bullet, then just bite the bullet and, you know, just keep doing, you know, doing how you, you feel like is your character. And, um, mm-hmm. But it's one or the other, you know, and, and it, it, honestly, it, it, to me, it's always better just to be honest with people and you don't have to do it in a disrespectful way. You can do it in an honest way and a straightforward way and you can still be stern about it, but just kind of like just professional, just keep the professional mm-hmm. living in it. And and uh, everything should be fine. You shouldn't have to worry about oh, am I gonna lose my job for saying this to this person? Like no, like if if you have something on your mind and and you 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 feel like you're equal, like just kind of show them that you're equal. Don't be scared to to uh, to to talk and show them that you're you're an equal counterpart. You know, you can't you can't hide mm-hmm. behind. Like your uh, like your fears of like oh well what if this is gonna happen or what if, what if they might think no like show them you're equal mm-hmm. do it with respect and it it's, it's, mm-hmm. as long as you're communicating there shouldn't be any issues you know. Mhm. I want to also bring in um area code two eight four four seven. They've been very patient. Want to bring them into the show and if see if they have any thoughts they want to share. Hello, Mississippi. Hey, Charlotte Champagne, what's happening? You already know what it is. DJ Sergeant Rob broadcasting live 7,000 feet VI satellite from up under the grind. Grind hard radio affiliates for these idiots. You understand me? Because this is how we do it. What's up, DJ? He's one of the amazing hosts on um, Jit's Jit Chronicles show on Grind Hard Radio. So um, yes, you've been listening to the show tonight. Do you have any thoughts that you want to share with what we've been talking about? Okay. Now, I'm going to try to do this as politely as I can. Because, <laughs> Please do. And, 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 and just the reason, be, your, the reason, be yourself. Like I said, just be yourself. Just the, the, reason, the, reason why I said that, the reason why I said that is because this has always been a touchy subject since the beginning of the United States of America and printing the English language and writing all these mm-hmm. books and everything that's going on. Now, let's mm-hmm. just clear this up right now. And I know we got all types of races on this panel, so I want everybody to understand me, okay? Now, And also, DJ Sergeant Rock is African-American, so just we can everyone right. know. I'm, 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 a, I'm, I'm, I'm not just African-American. I'm African because <laughs> okay. now that that brings me to what I'm getting ready to say. The majority okay. of the people that's in the United States of America that have been in the United States of America built this country, this, that, and the third. A lot of them was brought up off of what that they were taught. You see what I'm saying? So it doesn't matter if it's the truth or not. It's just what you were taught. You know what I'm saying? And then a lot of people have been brought up off of truth. So the the reality is, Everybody has to recognize their own truth on how everybody got here and respect that as such. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't Mm -hmm. think God would have put all of us on this planet if he didn't want us to live together. I, I I don't think he did that just for the sole purpose of us being divided for the rest of our lives and our kids' lives and our kids' kids' Mm -hmm. lives. And, And I think the stereotype comes in where you got, okay, you got a certain group of white people, like you say, like got to dress up all the time, all right? You got certain white people that can't dress up all the time, but you never see those white people treat those white people bad. But now you got black people 
if we dress up all the time, then that means we trying to be white. You see what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I talked about this earlier in the show. Yeah. Yeah, I talked about this earlier in the show. Right. You have to recognize the stereotypes and know that the stereotypes are out there and don't let it cloud your judgment of what the overall picture is supposed to be. Because now, it doesn't matter what type of race a person is. I can get along with anybody because, number one, Mm -hmm. I respect other people's culture. I respect other people's spiritual practices. And that's another thing, you know what I'm saying? Your God might not work for you the way my God works for me. But I can respect your mm-hmm. God or whatever it is, religious practice that you practice. That's why I'm universal. I can go anywhere and get the same God I came with. I'm going to walk right back out the door with him. He's going to come mm-hmm. with me. He's going to be with me. And it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I just wish that it wasn't really a big deal about black and white. But there are differences, and people need to sit down and talk about that. And I'm glad y'all brought this up on this show, Chardé Champagne, because I've been getting mm-hmm. it right the whole time I've been listening to this. And it's like, oh, wow, you. You, got a demo, you got a demographic that's about numbers. So when you have mm-hmm. a demographic that's about numbers, what, what are they going to pay attention to? Just the numbers. The mm-hmm. DOJ mm-hmm. says this. This percentage, percentage of this is this. The statistics show this. But then you got people who are actually living these numbers that other people mm-hmm. don't know. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it, it's yeah. kind of a touchy subject, but I wish everybody, black, white, Chinese, Jew, Gentile, I don't care what race you is, you could be an alien. I don't care. I'm down with George mm-hmm. Clinton and the P-Funk of Dallas. We're going to hop in the mothership, and we're we going to party mm-hmm. in space. You know what I'm talking about? I just wish everybody yeah. just live together and love each other and respect everybody for the truth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So why don't I want to have all of you guys on? I'm going to bring Donna back in because she's been listening patiently as well. I want to know, with all this being said and what we've been talking about tonight, what are some solutions that we can be able to bring about healing the racial tension in America and that's going around? For those of you guys who have noise going on in the background, if you can try to silence the noise, that would be great because we can hear it in Please. the studio. So whoever has any yes. um, noise in the back, please try to silence it. So yes, with we want to hear everybody clearly. Time, yes. So if, I know a lot of people are calling because you were, like, on the go and coming from work. Thank you, but um, if you can try to get it as quiet as you can around you, that would make it a lot easier uh, for the show. So I want to know from you guys, what are some different ways, like how can we bring about solutions in our country and bringing healing to these areas? of racial tension to with law enforcement, you know, all these different things, stereotypes. Teach your children at a young at an early age. Teach them at a young age. I I, I firmly uh stand on um family values at the end of the day. It starts at home. Point blank mm-hmm. period. You know, right. and not mm-hmm. to even be funny. I just feel like this, and I'm not trying to be funny, but if your child know all the words, adore it, explore, and yo gabba gabba, um, then they are intelligent enough to be talking about what's going on in the real world. They might not process mm-hmm. it all at one time, but they definitely going to understand it. So at the end of the day, Charlie, it starts mm-hmm. at home, Donna. It starts with mom, mm-hmm. dad, mm-hmm. grandma, auntie, uncle, mm-hmm. neighbor. It yeah. starts at home. Definitely. Um, what about you, Donna? How do you think, what are some solutions of how we can bring healing to our country and healing to all the racial tension and between, you know, the law enforcement and the community? Um, you, you know, I think the, I, I, I was here in Fresno and they had that big, huge um, protest just recently. I actually was Mm -hmm. one of the cars that was in front of it and sat there for a couple hours waiting to get through the intersection. And I didn't actually understand what was going on because I had not been watching the news. Um, Mm -hmm. And I I guess I just did not really understand why all that was happening. And it wasn't one race out there. There were all these races out there. There were white people, there were Asian people, there were Hmong people, there were black people. And all I heard was, you know, the police were trying to keep some kind of peace. All I heard from everyone out there was a lot of 
swearing. There were little kids. There were big people. And these people were using every four-letter word in the book, screaming and yelling at these police officers, really, that weren't doing anything wrong. Um, um, I... I I really I really go back to what I said, you know, we need to teach our kids from a young age how to mm-hmm. look at everyone, no matter what color they are. And, and respect and each other. Look, That's and right. respect each other and, and look for the, you know, there's, I will say there's good and bad in every race. There are good people, mm-hmm. there are bad people. There are, you know, you right. guys have been doing a lot of talking about, how someone dresses. I know the gentleman, mm-hmm. very nice gentleman, by the way, that was just on. You talked about mm-hmm. um, African Americans that dress up are trying to be white. I don't think that at mm-hmm. all. Um, mm-hmm. I, I no, I you don't. At, no, you don't think that. But other African Americans will look at that person and say that you're trying to be white. Right, right, right. Just that because is, of their smarts or their intelligence. That's right. But yeah, see, so I think that's that a, that's comes from a perception and how you were brought up, right? Yes. That, that, that all goes it it is a reflection. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Right. Because you were so, taught that. You were taught that. See, right. like, like I said, it goes back to what you was taught, and it goes back to what you actually really know and believe in your heart to be the truth. You know what I'm saying? Right. If everybody knows the mm-hmm. truth about everybody, then what is everybody mad about? But you know, you know what I'm what? saying? Mm-hmm. If if we all judge people based on on our beliefs, not what anyone mm-hmm. else thinks. If I look at someone and say, That's a really great person, um mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what race, why don't we bring our kids right. up? Why don't we mm-hmm. bring our kids up and say, you know what, we're gonna look at life and people and society differently than Mm-hmm. You know, the way things have happened maybe in the past. Let, let's raise mm-hmm. our kids with those positive perceptions. Let's raise our mm-hmm. kids up with those positive thoughts about all races. You know? Mm-hmm. I feel, you know, what I also feel is that people need to learn how to be upset and angry without tearing things up and tearing people down. Like, I don't understand, like, what happened to people. Like, you um, you talked earlier, Nathan, about Martin Luther King. He's an example of someone who could be very upset and angry, but you don't have to hurt people at the same time. You know what I mean? And I mm-hmm. feel like we can like, I don't have a problem with people being upset. When you see certain things that are happening in the world, it makes perfect sense for people to be upset. But I do have a problem with people burning things down. I do have a problem with people cursing people out and not actually trying to find a solution. It's like if I'm going to be angry, I'm going to use my anger to make a difference. You know what I'm saying? I'm not oh, going to be angry. Oh, I know how you say angry, this, Sade. Angry. Now, you what know what? You, you brought up a valid point, Sade. Now, that's real what you just said. Now, that that's just so yeah. true. But you got a lot of people out here that are not thinking like that because of the environment that they come from. So that's Mm -hmm. basically the only language that they know, you know, right Mm -hmm. back to the people that wear suits all the time every day versus the people who don't wear suits all the time every day. I mean, there's always going to be a stereotype, regardless of what we say or how we feel. I want to get those names off of what you just said. Uh, hold on for a second, Don. I want to get Nathan's thoughts on this too because he's been extra quiet. I feel like he's brewing in some stuff right now. <laughs> you guys don't know oh. Nathan is my most controversial friend, but he's a really good guy, but very controversial. Yes, so he go is. Ahead, I love Nathan. Oh, oh. So let me get started because I'm quiet. Because I'm quiet, I got to be brewing something up. Is that it, what was you're right now? <laughs> <laughs> it was quiet a good thing. Quiet was always subtle, right? <laughs> All right. So here's so. But the funny part is she was dead right. I actually was. So um, <laughs> I have a, <laughs> she was in the argument together. I knew it. I felt it. You know what? Um, I, you know, uh, one thing I'm really big into is uh, Shadi knows is I'm really, really big into politics. That's my thing. I'm really big mm-hmm. in politics. And I mm-hmm. really don't think you're going to get rid of any race relations until it can no longer be used for politics. That's what I truly mm-hmm. believe. Until this mm-hmm. issue cannot be used to by exploitation of a political party, you will not. This issue will never go away, because right mm-hmm. now it is it is such an amazing tool to unify people for a political party. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. This specific issue is completely divided 
down the middle, completely, almost entirely by political party right now. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. The, mm-hmm. Uh, and I'll give you an example. The Black Lives Matter movement is almost 100% supported by the uh, Democratic Party and almost is 100% uh, unsupported by the Republican Party. Almost 100%. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, almost 100%. Interesting. And, and because the, the Black Lives Matter movement is almost entirely considered a left-wing movement, almost entirely. Whether you believe that or not, according to the media and according to politics, this is considered a left-wing movement. So the problem is people are right now, they're not even willing to listen because people, when they have ideological political differences, they don't listen to the opposing side. They just won't because we have, we have picked a side and we've decided that that side is wrong and our side is right and we will not listen. So I really don't believe until a political party cannot exploit this issue anymore, I don't think this is going to go away. And I agree 100% that a lot of things have to do with how you raise your kids and everything like that. But unfortunately, with how much influence social media and the news has on our kids now, you really don't have as much influence as you used to have on your kids. And that's mm, a sad But that's truth. why we need to fight and get so, it back, you know, because our kids yeah. are our number one priorities at the end of the day. And what uh, parents don't want their child to be the very best person that they can be. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I, I, I hear you wholeheartedly, yeah. Nathan. You know what I'm saying? But that's why we need to yeah. bring back those old school values and those traditional values. Because I know like that. on this I earth that don't want their child to be the very best person that they could possibly be. I have no issue no, with that whatsoever. Not. But Go ahead, Nate. No, I, I agree with that on 100%. I would love to do that. The problem is uh, you're still, you still have people out there, and I'm not saying who it is or whatever it is. Race relations is an amazing tool for isolation of power in this country. Right. It's an amazing tool. Right, right, it's that amazing. Is one money. You took the words yeah. right out of my mouth. So you it took is, the words yeah. right out of my mouth. So yeah. oh until God. you can get rid of that, until you can get rid of that, you're going to have a serious problem with race relations. In my well, opinion. But, okay, my. What I also feel, though, is that money talks. And when you have enough people who have their head on straight exactly, who also have money who are able to partner together, the same way people do evil to partner together with their money, people who, who want to do better and who have different trains of thought can also put their money together and say, sure. number one, make a I'm not going to buy, that's true. you know, yeah, I agree with from, you. number one, we can say our community is not buying any more Jordans until you start putting money into our community. And then <laughs> but they ain't going to do it. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, but, that's my point. but they not gonna that's do that. But they not gonna do that. You wanna know why? Because they have been fashioned to believe that the Jordan, whatever the latest Jordan sneaker is, you need to have that. Like it's crack, or like it's a vegetable, or like it's water. So once your <laughs> yeah. mind is programmed to believe that. And, of course, kids growing up want to be like all the other kids. If a kid at school has got on some nice pair of shoes, he he don't want to get laughed at. So he really is looking up to the sneaker to say, if I had that sneaker, I'd be just as cool as the cool kids. You see what I'm saying? We mm-hmm. got we got to break our children up from being fashioned into whatever the latest fashion is. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Then we got to be mindful exactly. of what we spend our dollars at. You got people like Miss Sade Champagne that she's changing the world every time she gets on air. You understand what I'm saying? So it can right. be done. We just got to right. get into the power of position to start doing that. And not only yeah. start doing it, but sticking to it. You got to be right. a continuous I, thing. Because I honestly think education and and poverty, it's or we go into the financial part, are the keys. Because honestly, if you educate the kids from, like for me, you know, like you may say I'm a part of the one or top 10%, Nathan, whatever, but I look at it like I'm not going to spend my money on your expensive shoes and all your brands until I see, number one, I don't want it because I'm not going to work hard just so I can give you back my money, number one. Number two, until I see that you are using your power and your influence to make a difference to the people that you are marketing for, I'm not supporting it. And when you have enough people that are able to say, instead, we're going to build these things in our communities. We're going to help these kids so that way they can begin to be educated. And instead of them giving their money away to these things, they can start making money. You know what I mean? Because I feel like a lot of this, honestly, is really just, I'm not saying it's simple, but I'm saying it's education and it's finance. Mm-hmm. And if we're able to see, and we're not the... And there's tons of wealthy people who, with the with the right heart, who want to make an impact. That I don't know if they're just not stepping up enough or what. I'm not going to look for them to do it. No, nah, they can't. Hard. They can't. They can't because the powers that be 
has more money than them, and they bigger than them, and they control everything that's going on. So they got to step lightly. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, once you join up with that particular organization and you have to do what they say do, and that's the only way you're going to make your money, then, you know, you just got to bite the bullet if that's what you're doing. You don't necessarily have to, but if that's what you feel like that's what you got to do, then that's nine times out of ten the majority of the entertainers and performers in the world. They get down with the system, Mm -hmm. and the system makes sure Mm -hmm. they straight. But it ain't got nothing to do Mm -hmm. with everybody else. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Adana. Sade, you asked you asked me one question. What would I do to um, impact change? Really quickly. Yeah. You know when when I was when I got out of the military, um, I was told that by family that you don't have what it takes to become a nurse, and I could have sat and said at that moment, really, and been really Uh. angry and vengeful. And and looked at myself as like a victim, but instead, you know what I did? I took that that irritated, angry um, um, feeling to that comment, and I turned it upside down, and I took it as fire to force me to work hard, work harder than I ever probably would have if they didn't say that. And now I have three college degrees, and I'm a registered nurse and able to help people every single day. So I think if people mm-hmm. take the anger and the tension that they have for these issues, and they, instead of taking it and doing bad with it and hurting other people because of it, turn it into mm-hmm. something positive and use that, use that energy to go out mm-hmm. in the world and make a difference. I, I think we mm-hmm. could definitely impact change everywhere. Well, let me ask mm-hmm. you this. What if you got people that's actually doing that, and every time they turn around, the door gets slammed in their face? So what are they to do? The people that really want to do that sure. but can't. Sure, you know what I'm saying? Sure, this, is, this, is what, this is what I tell people. I'm 48 years old, and I got out of the military with um, a thyroid disease. I was 89 pounds, and I couldn't. I could, I could, I was, got divorced, and I couldn't get a job because I was so sick. I ended up on welfare for two and a half years, and I said, this is not going to be the life that I want for myself and my kids. I want to make this life different. Did I have any money? No, I was getting $627 a month. I had nothing. My condominium I had burnt to the ground. I had nothing. And you know what? I went to college every day. I worked 12-hour shifts at night as a nursing assistant. And I said, you know what? I can sit here and say, poor me, my life sucks, everything that's happening is tragic. Or what I said to myself was, I want better for my kids. I don't want to live this life. And where do I want to be in three years and five years? I want to be working in the hospital as a nurse. I want to go from making six dollars an hour to making forty dollars an hour and how am i going to do that Mm -hmm. i have to take that like shawty goes out and she is looking for her dream i had a dream of becoming a nurse i didn't know how i was going to become a nurse but i worked my ass off to find a way to become a nurse and i it was hard 12 hour shift Mm -hmm. at night as a nursing assistant and i worked um, went to school all day long. Three years later, I became a nurse. And, and I, I think and, this is important for you to share this because being a Caucasian woman, people would not expect that you would have these many challenges. Like people would not expect that you grew up with people telling you you were never going to be anything, that you couldn't do anything in your life. They would not know that you were a single mom, that you were all, also got really sick and, you know, end up getting divorced and all these, you know, went through poverty. And I think it's important to know that because in our society, we only do have a view, one type of view of what poverty looks like. And it's not the stereotypically it doesn't look like what people, what you look like, you know what I mean, or what you had been through. And so I think it's important well, for people that we actually have a lot more in common than what we think. People understand that we have a lot more in common. Right. Than think. They just look and, and now no now I'm thinks. a nurse, and what do I what do I do? I go help at risk teenagers, and what do I teach them? Because a lot of mm-hmm. them have no desire. They they just they just think their life is going to be crummy forever. They think that, you know, I, I have no options.
options and no opportunities. And I tell them, you have you have a whole world of opportunities. You just have to grab it. You know, you can have a dream and you can have aspirations, and they can sit mm-hmm. there forever. It doesn't matter how rich or poor you are. But but the thing that's going to get you where you want to go is that action on those things you're saying. Mm-hmm. If you, if you mm-hmm. want to be rich, then go out and try to um, get a job and get a better job and get a better job and keep adding to what you're doing to try to become better. Like me, mm-hmm. I got told, I had every door slammed in my face. You can't do it. You can't do it. You're too sick. You're not going to be able to pass a physical to get into nursing school. Family saying, you can't do it. Well, yes, I did. And, and mm-hmm. you know, that, that's one of those things I try to tell these kids. You can. You know, if mm-hmm. you want to do it, put that heart and that passion and that soul into what you want to do, and you can do anything in this world. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say it's impossible. Say it's impossible, but I will say this. There are some people in this world that have been down the same road a lot of people have been down and have got the door slammed in their face constantly, 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 and constantly to the point to where they just give up hope and it calls them, see, right back to the mindset. You know what I'm saying? If Mm -hmm. everybody told that they could be somebody, then it's something totally different. But if you're being told that you can't be nothing, and then it took for them to tell you that you couldn't be nothing instead of already believing in yourself that you are somebody from the jump, that you could do anything that you want to do, See, then that's what we call tough love. I'm from the South. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and my grandparents, mm-hmm. they didn't play with us. I'm talking about they cuss you mm-hmm. out, they'll beat you down, throw, find the nearest object and throw it at you just for you to get it because these are life lessons mm-hmm. that you're going to have to take with you for the rest of your life. And I'm okay. like I said, once everybody understands that we are all from different walks of life, but we all have different areas that go through the same thing and learn we to do. respect each other. You know what I'm saying? Because it doesn't matter who's rich or who's poor. If I can hang with you while you're rich, I can hang with you while you're poor. We just hanging. It ain't nothing going on. It ain't no big yeah, deal. Because at, at the end of the day, it mm-hmm. always comes down to education and information. And I feel like when you have the proper education and information, you are able to perceive and receive things just a little bit better. You know, so got to mm-hmm. be educated and stay informed. Well, and you know, and the, you know, the, the one day. thing. And, you know, the one thing that we all have in common, we all wake up every single morning and we have a choice. I have a choice <laughs> when I wake up in the morning to have a great day or have a crummy day. I have a choice mm-hmm. every morning that I wake up to say hello to the people that are I work with and say hello to the people that I love in my family. Or I could wake mm-hmm. up, I have a choice to wake up and have a really crummy day and, you know, right. be angry at the people in my life. It's a choice. We all mm-hmm. have a choice. So why don't we all wake mm-hmm. up and make the choice to make this world a better place instead of waking mm-hmm. up with um, mm-hmm. and, and You have mm-hmm. that was born from the angry side of, of the genetics code. I mean, you, I mean, mm-hmm. let's just be real here. Let's just be real here. You wouldn't have good without the bad. You know what I'm saying? So just like you said, you got good you know, Caucasian white people, and you got bad Caucasian white people. You got white people that was born on the, you know, other side of the fence where it ain't no good going to come about what they trying to do, and they're going to try to influence right. as many people to get down with them to do the same ignorant stuff that they do. But lo and behold, you got a lot of white people that's on the right-hand side of the fence that the people that's on the other side of the white fence don't like because mm-hmm. they for the right. And these people for the wrong. Everybody know that. You see what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. why I say everybody got to respect each other and respect where everything comes from because at the end of the day, it's always going to be a stereotype dealing with black and white. I don't care where you go. I don't care what you deal with, where it be politics, I said that where it be financial, show, you're right. where it be economics. <laughs> it's always going to be a stereotype. But just like I said, you got a demographic that's going to go off numbers and you got a demographic that's going to go off of reality. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And Nathan, what numbers are some don't your equate today? reality. What's that? I said to me, ahead. numbers don't you equate even... reality. Oh no, you're, oh, you're my right bad, on my that, bad. I'm sorry, Anthony. No, no, Anthony, you're right on that. I, I agree with that because it's not always about the numbers, even though we definitely do make it about that. 
Nathan, what are some of your thoughts on this? On how to make it better? Is that the question? Either that or anything or, that's been said. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I think everybody's kind of saying some good stuff in here. Um, I, I, mm-hmm. I think everybody is giving pieces of it. You know, I think Mm -hmm. there's tiny little pieces in here, but all of these things equal to a society that works well together. It's not Mm -hmm. like one specific thing. You're talking about like, do, do I think that it's, it's right that if you get up and have a good attitude and work hard, that that helps? Mm -hmm. Sure. Do I Mm -hmm. think, do I think that that's going to work out for everybody? No. Cause I think some of those things are no offense. They're just BS statements. I don't believe I, I believe everybody is born equal and I believe we should give everybody equal opportunities. But at the end of the day, not everything everybody does is equal. Like, mm-hmm. like, you know, people do different things that result in better things for society. You know, like you're mm-hmm. not guaranteed to do well and you're, it's not going to, it's not going to work out amazing for everybody based on just trying hard. It's just not mm-hmm. like, there's going to be some sorrow because there's a lot of things that have to be messed up. And, right. you know, right. so there's, a, there's a lot of things that are just not going to work out for certain people. And it's not necessarily a race issue. There's a lot of other factors in general going to other things. You know, some people are born financially set off better than others, and that puts them way ahead. That's the reality. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's, a re- that's the reality <laughs> we don't. live in. Even if they dumb in the brain, if they was born with people that already had it going on, that makes yeah, them automatically out. have it going yeah. on. That's right. Of course. That's 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 mm-hmm. you know, that's a legacy. That's a lot of that's not just this society, that's all societies. It's the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, we call it a legacy at a college, you know, like a high end like mm-hmm. Harvard. You're a legacy, you mm-hmm. automatically get put right. into it because your dad was there. That's that's mm-hmm. that's something though that is not a problem in society. That's just how people as humans work. You know, mm-hmm. we favor people. We favor people that we're closer to. Mm-hmm. You know, we 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 don't favor people that we don't have any connection to. And mm-hmm. until you can take a step back and you can say like, we need to sacrifice our own personal. Um, conveniences at the heart at the betterment of everybody you're going to continue to have a lot of these issues but the reality is a lot mm-hmm. of people don't want to sacrifice the comfort of what they're doing for the sacrifice right. of others. That's right. the okay, that is like so, one of the um, truest comments that you have ever made nathan i want you to repeat it again that's one of the truest comments not, you've ever no. made say it again yes. I, I don't even i don't even know what i said at this point so, uh, you said no. What, what you said, what you said is that she's so silly. What you said is the reality is that a lot of people don't want to sacrifice for a moment in order for the be- for the betterment of everyone else. I mean, we like com- we like we like comfort. We as humans like mm-hmm. comfort. I mean, come on. Mm-hmm. Like, let's not pre- let's not pretend like any of us are not. We don't to an extent do that on our own all the time. You know. Mm-hmm. I mean. And, okay, and it's not always- listen to what you just said. Listen to what you just said. Now, I'm being funny when I say this, but it's so for real. This land is your land. This <laughs> land is my land. Well, how is my <laughs> land? I can't even be comfortable living on it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we, we got the next well, go. American Idol. We're going to start wrapping up for the night, so I want to have everyone share their final thoughts. I'm going to go, and then I'll have you guys share some thoughts. I want to share a couple comments, too, um, from, from our listeners that were posting on social media. So I asked the question, what is one thing you wish people knew and understood about your race? And so, and I told him I was going to share the comments on the show that it's for Sade Champagne Show. Nathan Martell, who we're listening to right now, said that white people can sometimes dance. It's true. <laughs> so, and then, can I say this, Sade? If I'm like black, people can't dance yeah. like me. I'm very still. Yeah. You ain't so, no way. G- way. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't dance. I still can't dance. <laughs> And yeah, forget having two left feet. Running. They got three left. They got three left feet. Forget having two left feet. They got three. Yeah, left feet. I, I can only do a couple uh, of you know snaps, and that's about it. Yeah, that's so funny. And then um, Nasina Nasina Blevin said, "Just because I'm mixed with more than one thing doesn't mean I'm not discriminated against. 
also I identify as multiple things. Mm-hmm. Black is one of them. I don't like it when people tell me I am not black because I have multiple races. <laughs> and then right. lastly, and then lastly, Paul Moore says that I identify my race as human, not as some kind of label defined by the Amen. world. Amen. Skin pigmentation. Blind people understand that skin color is irrele- irrelevant. It is the heart and spirit that matters. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have my final thoughts, and then I'm gonna have you guys have your final thoughts, and then we're gonna end with one final song. So I just want to share with everyone a lot of things I believe to our listeners. It has to do with education, and it has to do with financial. Sometimes, obviously, as we we're talking about your finances don't seem as if they're going to change. You don't have to do things the way the world tells you that it has to be financially. You don't have to just work for somebody else. You can also dream of starting your own business. I don't want you to think just because of whatever race you grew up or how you grew up that that should have to determine and define your life. I grew up in circumstances where anybody could look at me and say that I should have been a statistic and this should have been my life. But by the grace of God and amazing people he's had around me and the mindset he's given me, I don't have to fall into people's stereotypes, and I don't have to be what anybody says that I have to be. And so I want to encourage you to our listeners, don't just don't just take things at face value of what people say. Be a critical thinker. Allow yourself to think for yourself. Do research and things, and be also critical of the research that you do. And also, don't compare yourself to other people. I don't look at someone else and say, well, because this person said, well, I should have that. There's a lot of things I may not have financially or material possessions that other people do, but my mentality and the way that I'm able to treat others and my spirit are very wealthy. I'm like a multi-billionaire in spirit, if not more than that. And so I want to encourage Amen. you very that rich. Right. outside <laughs> and to allow yourself to be educated. You know, and, and like I said, don't just look at things from face value. Be able to take it for yourself. You know, because the media will try to play tricks on you and lies on you. They just want to get your money and they want to. Just make you miserable so they can just keep you coming back for more. And so don't fall for right. it. All right, Jit, your final thoughts for the night. Absolutely. Short and brief, um, I always say each one, teach one, um, have the proper education and information. And always remember, uh, if the wagon makes the most noise, you know, so keep that in mind. Sade, darling, I am so encouraged and inspired by you. Uh, I love when you put together shows like this. I mean, and blessings to the panel. You understand what I'm saying? Miss Mika, mm-hmm. shout out to you. Catch you on the all new season of Radio Divas. And the ever so controversial Nathan Martell. Like, this is my brother <laughs> in my head. Like, I salute <laughs> and I look forward to the next time we're on the panel together. Good brother. And thank yeah, you I once again, Shadi. And then also go to Nathan, and then I'll go to our two amazing callers who called in. So go ahead, you first, Nathan. Yeah, you know, I just really am happy that, you know. <laughs> I, I deal with 99% of the people yelling at me and calling me names, which, you know, I get a, I get a kick out of it for the most part. Um, I'm glad I'm in the 2%. Yeah, and occasionally, <laughs> you know, occasionally it's nice to have a conversation where you can feel like you actually did something productive. Mm-hmm. Like, and, 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 and unfortunately, unfortunately I don't get much of that anymore. Um, you're, it's 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 nice to feel like occasionally you have it where you you're feeling like you're maybe on the same team, and uh, mm-hmm. I, I just don't feel like we get we don't we don't get enough of that anymore, and it's always our team mm-hmm. versus their team, so right. it's very encouraging, mm-hmm. and I and I really I really enjoy these panel discussions. Me too. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Also, now to our listeners, our amazing listeners who called in, who always support me and support Sade Champagne Show. Um, Donna, we'll start with you first. Do you have any final words you want to share? I, I just have to say thank you for um, letting me join you tonight, and um, it was very great pleasure to meet all of you. And you know, all of you go out in the world and be an inspiration and influence others in a positive way and we can all um, make a difference in this world um, by doing so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. And and to you, DJ Sergeant Ross, thank you so much for your support and calling in. What are your final thoughts for tonight? True. All right, my final thought for the night is, uh, and I'm going to keep it all the way 100. I'm going to be trill one time, you know what I'm saying, before we go off the L. I'm going to let everybody know right now, I don't care what color you is. You know what I'm saying? Search inside yourself. Search within yourself to find the truth. 
and you'll know exactly what you need to do as an individual and as a person trying to make a difference on this planet. Because I don't care what color you are, there's always going to be people of the same color and other races that ain't going to like what you're doing. And my advice to you is to keep going. Do not let nobody stop the love and the God that you have in your heart from showing. Don't let nobody never stop you from shining, from being who you want to be. And I don't care who don't like it. You know what I'm talking about? Because if you ask me, the devil is a punk ass bitch. And hey. don't nobody like oh, wait, no him. And it, no it, 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 it is what it is. It is what it is. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, I, I had to be I myself just one time. That. Now that's it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But I love everybody. I want everybody wow. to get along and love each other. You know what I'm saying? Because ain't nobody mad but the devil that we even had this discussion tonight. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. You know what I'm talking about? Be for the right. And not for the wrong, and let's all get along. And I love y'all, and I'm out. You know, come back. <laughs> Amen. I passion so much. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I pre I appreciate your passion a lot. And um, so thank you to everyone who tuned in tonight to our first ever race and identity in America special episode on the Shade Champagne Show. Uh, thanks to my all-star panel, Nathan Martell. Thank you to Jet Chronicles. Thank you to Miss Mika. Thank you to all of our Thank callers. Well, that was Doug. Doug who called in. Thank you to Aaron who called in. Thank you to DJ Sergeant Rock who called in. Thank you to Donna. You guys are phenomenal. And I just want to thank everyone for downloading, subscribing, and sharing my radio show. Thank you to everyone who shares your thoughts and opinions. You had, like, so many amazing thoughts you wanted to share, which I'm going to share just a couple more that you guys put here on social media. You said uh, you want people to know about your race, that skin color or no skin color appearance does not determine race. Moreover, that the proper term should be ethnicity. That comment is from Casey. And so we want to thank you so much for sharing that. Next week's special guests are one of my biggest, biggest inspirations ever, South African theologian, international traveling speaker and author, Bertie Britt. We'll be featuring him for our Who Wrote That segment. Someone is going to win a free copy of his new book, Jesus is a Tie. Also, my favorite worship and inspirational artist, UK born and raised, the internationally traveling performer, Godfrey Bertil, will be in the studio. And my dear friend, Caitlin Louise Barnett, will be featured for the debut of our brand new segment, Entrepreneurs on the Move. Thanks to Travis Miller for creating and producing my show's theme song and to Scott Swish for mixing the song. As always, thank you for listening to the Sade Champagne Show. Our final song of the night is Brit Nicole with The Sun is Rising, and we will see you next Wednesday right here from 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific time right here on Grind Hard Radio. Where dreamers dream, where dreams come true, there's no limit to what we can do. Turning no's to yes, leaving doubt behind, releasing the stress. We were born to shine.